serving fans throughout the Midwest and even more around the world. This is the Show Me Sports Network. The following is an exclusive broadcast property presentation of the Show Me Sports Network and is a high fidelity all digital broadcast. This broadcast is copyright by the Show Me Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast without the Show Me Sports Network's written consent is prohibited. Broadcast crew is ready in the Doc and Norm Direct Broadcast booth. Exclusive pregame coverage of Jefferson City Renegades Baseball is brought to you by Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City, Avon with Michelle Carty, Boone County Journal, Centurion Cares, Christopher Scott, Farmers Insurance, Doc and Norm Direct, Eddie Goodell Society. Han Custom Laser Engraving, LLC. Hoslog Landscaping and Design. Last Sentinel Firearms. Retrieving Freedom. River Oak Christian Academy. Sawdust Studios. State Tech of Missouri. And Walk Off Wood Bat Company. The excitement is building in the stands. And the tension is rising in the dugout as first pitch is just around the corner. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Jefferson City Renegades Baseball on the Renegades Radio Network and the Show Me Sports Network. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone. Blake Gazaway here with you, joined by Ben Schmidt as we are set for game two of our doubleheader as the Carroll Merchants, who sit at 13-12 and 12 on the season, Facing off against the Jefferson City Renegades, who sit at 9-11 on the season. Again, these two teams matched up for game one of two as they match up here. First game went in favor of the uh, Merchants as they won by a 7 to nothing uh, put out, shut out win in a game that uh, really not a whole lot to describe it other than it was all Merchants all game long. This is quite the different introduction than what we're used to, and it's pretty cool to see because usually when we have these the lineup introductions for the Renegades, they call one by one, and when the player and their spot in the lineup is introduced, they they all jog out to their respective positions. But right here, what just happened, there was a meeting between the starters just off the third base line, and then they all sprinted out to their respective positions at once. So kind of a cool team thing there. Maybe they're just switching things up, hoping to get some good mojo going before game two here. Well, I think really ultimately the deciding factor is the fact that we're ready to play baseball. We don't have the time to do all the pomp and circumstances as we're already uh, right about coming. We're going to come in about an hour behind when we thought the game would be underway. So taking a look at the starters for the uh, Carroll Merchants, again, set at 13 and 12. They will uh, lead off at center field with Michael Alt. Third baseman batting second will be Seth Christensen. Playing left field, batting third will be Parker Ingram. Batting fourth on first base, Garrett Freeman. Batting fifth and second base will be Jordan Matthewson. Catching, batting sixth will be uh, Noah Buss. Batting seventh, shortstop Andrew Schroeder. DH batting eighth will be Jacob Rochester. Rochester. I can't read my own handwriting. I was, yeah, I was trying I was, to scribble it down as fast as I, I could. I was going to say I can't help you out over there. Yeah, and then uh, right, and then uh, in right field, I'll get it right to Missy. I found another mistake I had. Right field will be batting ninth will be Kyle Berg, and on the mound will be Blake Neal. As taking a look at the starters for the Renegades. We'll work those through. It'll be Wagner at left field batting first. Batting second will be third baseman Ty Wilmsmeyer. That was Cole Wagner. Playing in right field batting third, Jack Matashak. Designated hitter batting fourth, Brennan Perkins. Catching, batting fifth, TJ Rockerbomber on first base. Batting sixth, Carter Gorling. Batting seventh center fielder, Ross Lovich. Batting eighth playing shortstop is Taylor Hopkins. Batting ninth, second baseman making his Renegades debut will be Andrew Ingram. Sorry, Andrew M. Garten. Can't read my handwriting for that one either. On the mound will be Colin Damel. First pitch will be outside ball one as we are underway. Like I said, trying to scribble things down between the games here. And uh, M. Garten making his debut at second base for the Renegades. He is a new addition to the squad. 1-0 offering. That one is just low. Misses ball two. So that will take the count to two balls and no strikes. Pretty exciting here tonight for the Renegades when you do have a new player, especially when you're about a month into the season. Could hopefully, at least I think they're hoping, maybe be a spark plug both on offense and defense. That pitch, that one down centrally. It takes the count, two balls, one strike. As on the mound is Damel. Damel, a sophomore right-handed pitcher from Emporia State. He hails from Overland Park, Kansas, is where he is from. That pitch, that one misses. 
Bounces away from Rocker Bomber. I'd like to see the Renegades, too, maybe put something on the board early. I mean, last game, you're for the f through the first three innings scoreless, down 1-0 after four, and I feel like the, the whole feeling would have been a lot different had they been up 1-0, 2-0 after one or two innings. That one caught the outside part of the plate for called strike number two as Damel listed at 6'3", 200-pound right-hander. So now they will have the payoff pitch. That one misses, so a leadoff walk issued to Alt. As for Alt, he is uh, from Appleton, Wisconsin, plays at Lewis University. Now this will be third baseman Seth Christensen. As for Christensen, he is from Victor, Idaho, plays at Dakota Westland University. Christensen turned in a couple of fine plays at third base in game one of this double hider. Certainly played a, played a factor in some of the elimination of some a couple of Renegades base runners. First pitch to him, and they're called strike one as he digs in on the right-hand side of the plate. Again, field looks great. The team jumped in and prepped it for game two of the doubleheader here, so they've got it ready to go. 0-1 offering from Damel. That one swung on and missed. That'll take the count. To no balls and two strikes. Again, it'll be Alt, who's on first base via a walk. Then Christensen, who's at bat right now. Ingram is in the on-deck circle, the first three that Damel will face, trying to get out of it, working the minimum here. 0-2 offering. That one down central, called strike three. Backwards K recorded, out number one. Yeah, there was a good mix of pitches in that at bat by Damel. The 0 1 pitch that, even though it ended up in the left handed hitter's batting box, it had some good movement and dove out of the zone and certainly looked enticing to first to Christensen. And then coming back 0 2, Fars one, like you said, catches the middle of the plate at the knees and it certainly froze Christensen. So good mix and match there of off speed and fastball out of the hand of Damel. Now batting left fielder Parker Ingram. He plays at the University of Northern Georgia from Gray, Georgia, where he hails from. That pitch outside, Rocker Bomber doing a nice job to keep it in front of him. Looking at the roster of the uh, Merchants, they have quite a squad that has really spread throughout the uh, country. So they've done a great job in recruiting players. As we're just after 8 o'clock, Blake Gazaway here with you, joined by Ben Schmidt here from the Doc and Norm Duradcast booth. Ashley in the peanut gallery behind us. So 1 0 offering from Damel will be forthcoming. Long look in. That pitch downstairs and outside, ball two. Remember, go riding with Doc and Norton, Mid Missouri's leader in Premier Group Travel. Group sizes of 1 to 100 or beyond. They do it all. Doc and Norm Direct, the official transportation provider of the Renegades. They get us to all of our road games safely, efficiently. Most importantly, they get us there in style and with a great air conditioner as well. <laughs> to book your spot on the next adventure, call them at 573 256. 1991 as that pitch swung on and missed. Now on a strike, number one. Now on a 2-1 count to Ingram, I don't know how enticed I'd be to give him a good pitch to hit because we saw in the first game when he got one pretty much right down central, he deposited it over the left field wall. Really no doubt whether that one was going to leave the yard. So certainly has the power to send one out of here. So two balls and one strike. Damel's next offering swung on and missed. We'll leave in the count at 2-2. Two two. Also for Doc and Norm Direct, you can... Also, email them at reservations at moexpress.com. Again, the official broadcast booth sponsor of our broadcast here for Jefferson City Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Two balls, two strike pitch. That one is going to be fouled out of play. I made the comment about not wanting to give Ingram something to hit, and ever since the demo has gone back-to-back -back pitches, we're just basically, here it is, see if you can hit it. Back-to-back -back fastballs that pretty much right down the middle, especially the first one that Ingram swung on and missed at. That one a little more off the plate, and Ingram fouled it off, but it, it certainly does not look, despite the result of last game, that Damo is afraid to, to pump a strike in there to a dangerous hitter. Well, Damo will look in. He'll get the sign from Rocker Bomber. Looks over, checks the runner at first. Now he'll get set on the rubber. Snap look at home. There's the 2-2 pitch. Strike three called. Back-to-back -back strikeouts looking. And back-to-back -back rate, pitch location, and good mix and matching of pitches, too. Just had the back-to-back -back fastballs. One swung on a miss and the foul ball. And then in a 2-2 count, Damel goes with the off speed and basically froze Ingram. I don't think he was expecting him to go back to the to the slower pitch there. And nothing really that Ingram was going to do except leave the bat on his shoulder. So. Now this will be first baseman Garrick Freeman. He plays at Iowa Western Community College. He is from 
Papa Leon, Nebraska. Snap throw to first. Runner back safely. Might have butchered that. He's from Nebraska nonetheless. So first pitch was strike one for Freeman. Freeman was the one who left the game in the first game. So interesting to see that they pulled him maybe just in part because they were up by so much, but now back in the lineup. So no balls and one strike. Damel looks in. He'll take a deep breath. A one offering swung on and missed for strike number two. So he's going to be ahead in the count. And no balls and two strikes. Again, taking a look at the offense, Damel pitching. And behind home plate, Rocker Bomber. First is Gorling. Then over at second base is M. Garden. Shortstop is Hopkins. Wilmsmeyer on third. And then left to right in the outfield was Wagner, Lovich, and Amatishak. 0 2 offering. That one fouled off. So we'll do the 0 2 again. Yeah, Damo has not been afraid in this entire first inning to just give the hitter something to swing at. I have not seen him fall fall behind a whole lot. And even though he's gotten into two ball counts, they've been when he's also been in two strike counts and trying to get the hitter to chase. So he's attacking, and that's why he's ahead 0-2 here. Out of Shaq, out in right field, wearing those white cleats again tonight. Trying to keep the magic alive in those. Damo's 0-2 offering that one outside. So that'll take it to one ball and two strikes. Again, these two teams matched up. Just uh, just about three hours ago is when we started in game one of the doubleheader. First game went in favor of the uh, Merchants by a score of 7 to nothing. That one, they say he went around. So that will be out number three. So one more than the minimum had to be faced after a leadoff walk was given up. In the inning, there were no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left, or actually one left on base. Got to go back, change my uh, score sheet here. One left on base. As we'll go scoreless, we'll go to the bottom of the first inning. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Throughout the course of any game, different actions stand out to different people. But everyone remembers a walk-off, especially if it's a walk-off wood bat. Handcrafted right here in Missouri, walk-off wood bat company bats are made with premium grade maple, ash, and birch, fully customizable to make it truly yours. From the length and weight to the barrel and handle color, you're able to customize every feature of your wood bat, including personalized engraving with a 45-day warranty. In addition to selling custom handcrafted bats, they also offer a selection of bat accessories, including lizard skin bat grips and batting gloves. To help find your confidence at the plate, give walk-off Wood Bat Company a call at 816-261-1014 or visit wowbats.com. We are State Tech. We are hands-on education. When you choose the number one two-year college in the country, you know you will be ready for your career. That's why at State Tech, we say, from the classroom to your career, we are the employer's choice. We are State Tech. We go to the bottom of the first inning here as Renegades will have their first chance to strike the iron here as pitching on the mound is Blake Neal for the Merchants, as Neal, a left-handed pitcher from University of Montevallo. He is from Owens Crossroads, Alabama. It's where he calls home. And hopefully a chance here facing the lefty, Neal. It's a, it's a new sight for the Renegades, as even though they did face a lefty to close out the first game in the seventh inning, the first six were against a right-handed pitcher, and the lefty that came into the seventh for the final three outs for the Merchants only faced four batters. So most of this lineup tonight for the Renegades didn't see the lefty and only saw right-handed pitching. And for a lineup that consists for a large portion of right-handers, hopefully a new look maybe starts to turn things around. You're absolutely right on that. Leading off here will be left fielder and Cole Wagner as Wagner. A 5, 870-pound freshman, left-hander across the board. He's from Rockhurst, or plays at Rockhurst from Festus, Missouri is where he calls home. So he will be due up first for the Renegades who have to find a way to get some offense going. They struggled here in this last game. Struggled after, what, the fourth or fifth inning last night's game at St. Joe. So Neal's first offering. That one is low misses, ball one. Yeah, like you mentioned, Renegades currently on a 12-inning scoreless streak. So it would be a nice start to this game if it snaps right here in inning number one. Renegades just have a hard time scoring runs here at home for some reason. 
particularly on Wednesday night. There's going to be a slow roller back to the pitcher, Neil Hill Glove. Throw to first over to Freeman in time for out number one. And you mentioned the struggles at home scoring runs, and I don't think it's because of fly balls keeping balls in the yard because last night in St. Joseph, dead center there is 400, and here's 375, and yet the Renegades were able to put up five runs last night. So I don't think it's a problem of balls not going out of the yard. It's just they can't put the ball in play and, and get it in gaps. So now do up will be third baseman Ty Wilmsmeyer, 6'185 185-pound junior. He is a right-hander across the board. Hails from Springfield, Missouri. He is a Mizzou Tiger. Next pitch, our first pitch to him downstairs inside ball one. Looking forward to this spring. We're definitely going to have to uh, go catch some Mizzou baseball and see the uh, couple of Mizzou Tigers, a couple, three of them that we have on the roster. So have to go check out one of their games. Cheer them on as their collegiate team. But right now they're renegades. There's a low hit ball. Center fielder going back on it, still going back on it. He'll be at the wall and make the grab as Wilmsmeyer gave that a ride but came up about four or five foot short from it leaving the ballpark. Yeah, off the bat, that one looked like it was destined for the over the left center field wall, but just kind of died out there at the wall. And funny, right as I keep talking about the, the dimension of the ballpark, this one just misses getting out. Right fielder Jack Matashak will step in now, six foot, 210 pound freshman. He's a left-handed batter, right-handed thrower. He is from Kirkwood, Missouri, and he plays at Jefferson College. So Matashak will step in. First pitch bounces across home plate. That'll be ball one. Again, trying to keep the magic going in the uh, white spikes that he's got on, as that seems to be the uh, magic keeper of the hits for him. One ball, no strike count. Neil looks back in. Next offering again, same location, bounces across home plate. That puts Matashek ahead in the count. Two balls, no strikes. Matashek's been money the last two games at home on Saturday and Sunday. Both wins in the Saturday extra inning game. He actually had four hits and scored a run. He went four for six and then came back on Sunday and drove in three runs, one on a two RBI double and the other on an RBI single. So he's been money the last two nights here at Vivian. Neil will look back in. 2-0 offering. That one down central, called strike one. Didn't seem like Matashek was ever going to take the bat off his shoulder there. It seemed like he was waiting until he got one pumped in there. Taking a look at our uh, current viewers, we got uh, a little over 50 listeners right now, so thanks for tuning in to us. We're well dotted across the Midwest here. 2 1 offering. That one swung on as it was in the dirt. That'll leave an account of two balls, two strikes. We've got some listeners in Ohio and Georgia, Illinois, Missouri, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, more in Georgia, Iowa, Nebraska. They're up into Minnesota, so hopefully you're enjoying tonight's broadcast here on the Show Me Sports Network. Next offering, there's going to be a bouncing ball that's going to get through as it was just inches over Neal's glove as Matashak sends it right back to where it came from, and he'll be standing on first base with a two-out single. This will be now the designated hitter in Brennan Perkins. As Perkins steps in now, he is 5'11", 195-pound sophomore. He is from Prairie Village, Kansas. Plays at Truman State, right-handed batter, right-handed thrower. Actually know right where Prairie Village is. I believe they're, are they the Buffaloes? Prairie Village Buffaloes? Oh, that's Prairie View. Okay, I don't know where Prairie Village is. <laughs> I thought I knew something. Of that one in the dirt. Ball one. Going back to Matashek as well, I mean, you see why he's batting third tonight because, man, especially here the last couple of nights, is he hitting well. It's a shame that he had to miss a couple games last week due to the hand injury. Otherwise, we'd probably be looking at a nine- or ten-game hitting streak, and I think the games before and after that, I, I believe he's gotten at least one hit in every game. So one ball, no strike count. Neil will look back in now, check the runner at first, second, look back in at Matashek, now he'll deliver the pitch. That one's going to be a bouncy ball. It'll be gloved at short, flip to second for out number three as that will end the inning. However, Renegades got a little bit of life going, so we'll take a quick break and be back as we'll go to the uh, top of the second inning. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. 
River Oak Christian Academy has been providing a strong biblical foundation and academic excellence within a Christian environment to students for more than 16 years. Located in the Jefferson City, River Oak Christian Academy offers kinder prep through 7th grade with 8th grade to be added in the 2023-2024 school year. River Oak Christian Academy's primary goal is the discipleship of the next generation to impact the world for Christ. Average class sizes are just 16 students with a student body composed of families from over 30 area churches. Kinder prep offerings include three and five full day sessions with kindergarten offering a half day and full day program. To find out more about River Oak Christian Academy, call them at 573-634-3983. Since 2018, Han Custom Laser Engraving LLC has been specializing in all things custom, using large format high powered lasers with some of the most advanced technologies on the market. Anything can become a canvas. The state of the art system makes quick work of custom engraving on cups, glass, tile, wood, acrylic, metal, headstones with endless possibilities. They also offer custom one of a kind signs that are sure to make your design stand out. Find them on Facebook at Han Custom Laser Engraving or call 573 489 8732 to find out more on custom laser engraving llc a veteran owned business we go to the uh, top of the second inning here's it'll be batters four sorry five six and seven will be due up to be second baseman jordan matthews will lead it no matthewson will lead it off then bus and schroeder as for Matthewson, he is from La Vista, Nebraska, plays at Buena Vista University. You think those are both relatively in the same location? Yeah, I would, uh, if I had to make a guess, that's probably what I would go with. So Matthewson will lead off here. As we said, it'll be Matthewson, Buss, and Schroeder, the three that are due up here. So Damo will look in and get the sign. His second inning to work here on the mound. That one fouled straight back. Strike one. Ernie Gage really had no answer for Matthewson in game one. Was three for his first three, recorded out in his fourth that bat. But through the first three, he went single, double home run. So he was a triple shy of the cycle, and his one home run to right field was hit on the line and got out of here in a hurry. He is one of the smallest players on the roster, I think, for either squad. That one is low and inside. That'll leave in the count of one ball and one strike. Yeah, I mean... You mentioned the height for at least the first game. Didn't really play a whole factor. He had one of the more powerful bats, so and his double was a pretty well well hit ball too. One one offering from Damel. That one inside off the glove of Rocker Bomber. So that will make it two balls and one strike again as we play here in the top of the second inning. Nobody out here. Is this the first batter of the frame? Damo will look back in, 2-1 offering. That one's going to be a ball. It's hit on the money to left field. Tracking it down is Wagner. So Damo able to corral Matthewson this go around. The battle between the two goes in favor of Damo. Now this will be Noah Buss stepping in as Buss steps in. He is from Lincoln, Nebraska, plays at University of Sioux Falls. So he will step in here as... He's a left-handed batter, has one out here. Nobody on the base path. Damel again looks in. He gets the sign from Rocker Bomber. Now his first delivery. That one down central, called strike one. And Bust the catcher is down in the count at 0-1. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal the roster from you, but I was using okay? it to look up uh, Matthewson because I needed the school name. And I'll tell you a little bit more about Matthewson after this next pitch. 0-1 offering on its way. That one's going to be a bounce foul, so be heading the count at 0-2. So Matthew Sin, we talked about the size, standing at 5-7, but certainly a whole lot of power on that bat. Over 24 games uh, his last season, first team all-conference, and hit 340. So He's definitely earned his starting spot for the Merchants for sure. Right here, Damel again, long look in, 0-2 offering. That one a bit high and a bit outside, so that'll make it one ball, two strikes. Damel getting the start here last year. He came to the Renegades and was an infielder, played a lot of short and second base. That was in June, July. He turned pitcher, and he's back this year to work on the mound for the Renegades. That one's going to be a well-hit ball. Wilms Meyer is going to go over and get it, but not before it takes a couple of bounces, and it'll be a one-out single for Buss as he will be standing on first base. Seen a couple left-handed hitters right, now. That is, you're right, that is Lovich, my 
My bad. Seen a couple left-handed hitters now for the Merchants. Try and take the ball the opposite way. Had the left-handed hitting Matthewson go out to left. It wasn't out. And then right now another left-hander. This one gets down for a hit. So seeing these, these left-handed batters for the Merchants really be able to hit to all fields. Mer or Matthewson last game, a couple of his hits both went to left and right. And now two lefties doing it again here in this game. So this will be the shortstop. And Andrew Schroeder stepping in. He's from Illinois. I am also from Illinois. First pitch outside, ball one. How do you say that town then? Let's see. Mundelein. Mundelein. Oh, that's where my grandparents live, Mundelein. Mundelein, Mundelein, yep. Illinois, plays at Iowa Western Community College. I'd have been close, but not exact. That one inside, ball two. Schroeder dropped down in the lineup here in game two. Hit leadoff was not really a factor when it seemed like pretty much everyone else was for the Merchants in game one. So Damon will check on the runner at first base. That's Bus. Long look in again at home. Now it's 2-0 offering. That one upstairs and outside. So the count will go to 3-0. Damol's retired. Three batters by way of two backwards K, one forward K. And also given up a walk in the first batter he faced in the game. Again, he'll look in. Now he'll tow the rubber to get set. 3-0 offering. That one outside, so a four-pitch walk issued to Schroeder. So now a little something brewing for the Merchants. Runners on first and second. Meaning at the mound happening, too, is Rock Roberts going to go out and speak with Damo. It's going to happen. I mean, I believe that is the first walk issue. I couldn't remember how the leadoff base runner in the first, how he reached. But really nowhere near close on the four pitches there by, delivered by Damo. But when... He has still pitched overall pretty well through the first four outs that he's gotten. So kind of just a, maybe a blip there, and hopefully he can find the strike zone once again now that the mound meeting's over. So now designated hitter Jacob Rochester. He is from Fairburn, Georgia, plays at University of Montevallo. So he will step in here, left-handed batter. So it'll be a right-handed pitcher versus left-handed batter here in this battle with one out, two runners on here as we play in the top of the second inning, still tied at 0-0. Zero to zero. Damo will check on the runner at second. Now he'll look back home. Now back to second, back home. Next pitch, that one's going to be sliced foul down the third base side. Once again, I obviously don't know if it was intentional there, but another ball off the bat of a left-handed hitter that would try to get out to the left side. So I don't know if that's a conceded effort or maybe it's just happening from a coincidence, but... It's not often you see so many batters in a lineup trying to make a conceded effort to push the ball to opposite field. So runners will take their leads on the base path, not really being held on very closely. 0-1 offering. That one is low. Rocker Bomber comes up, blocked it in front of him, does not throw anywhere. So I'm leaving the count on one ball and one strike. Rocker Bomber, pretty dependable defensive catcher, and shows it off again right there. That one was in the dirt, but no chance that that one was going to get through his legs. Otherwise, we're looking at runners on second and third, but nicely done by the Renegades catcher. All three of the catchers that we've seen for the Renegades have done quite well. We've got Rocker Bomber here, Fuller last game, and then Herschler, all three doing a great job behind home plate. It's nice to have three quality catchers behind your good starting rotation of pitchers throughout the season. So one ball, one strike count. And Damo looks back in. Next pitch, that one's gonna be a bouncing ball. It's gonna be a tough play at second. They'll throw over to first. Gorling legs it out and they say, did they say he was off the bag? They say, I believe that just that the runner beat it off barely. I think Gorling gave it a good stretch, but it was a bang bang play at the bag. And the new second baseman we just talked about really had a whole lot he could do there as it was hit so slowly had no play at second base because he would have had to do basically a no look behind the back feed and even though he made a good play to first base it was a hustling base runner up the line and they rule in favor of the merchants there so that's what I have to believe the call was just that he beat it out not that Gorling was off the bag. So Gorling had to stretch for it but tough play there as M. Garten the new addition to the Renegades roster you're right, he did about everything there. He could just a slow bouncing ball. First pitch in there called strike one as this is right fielder in Kyle Berg. As he steps in, he is from Carroll, Iowa, plays at Concordia University. So he's a hometown boy. He's playing for his hometown summer collegiate team. So he will dig back in again, left-handed batter. So another left versus right matchup. That one bit inside. They'll, they'll say he did not go around. They appeal to second. 
So that evens the count of one ball and one strike. It looked like from here he might have went ahead and went around, but they say he did not. So again, bases loaded here with three merchants at first, second, and third. One out, 1-1 one, one count. Damo looks back in. He'll get the sign from Rocker Bomber. Still looking in, 1-1 one, one offering. There's going to be a bouncing ball, and it's going to be gloved at short. Long throw to first, and not in time, and a run will score, and still the base is loaded. Really tough luck these last couple batters for both Damo and the Renegades. Back-to-back -back infield singles, as I'm assuming the one a batter ago was going to be ruled an infield single, but two balls that don't even find outfield grass, and they both end up as hits just because of where they were put. First one a slow tapper, and then the last one just hit so deep in the hole at shortstop. I believe that's Hopkins out there who made a good play, and it really just never had a chance. Some of the best shortstops in the league aren't even making that play with where that ball was hit so I deep in the hole. I didn't hear Tom, our statistician, saying there was an error on there, so I agree that I think both of those are infield hits. But you're right about that as on third base is Wilmsmeyer. He was diving after it, trying to get that, leaving the third base area. And for Hopkins, so he has no play to flip it to third base, which is where he's close because Wilmsmeyer was trying to get over and field it. So nobody there at third base to throw it to for Hopkins. And he's not in position to flip it to second base. So the only really... Uh, Really, any chance he's got to get anything is to make the long throw over to first base. However, the batter in Berg runs it out, gets an RBI single. Just a tough play. Same way with the one before that, just a slow roller, two very slow uh, rollers in the grass there. And M. Garten, really nothing for him to do but uh, get it and just try to flip it over to first base as this will go back to the top of the lineup and Michael Alt, the center fielder. As he'll dig in, again, left-handed batter, first pitch to him upstairs, ball one, as Alt puts that left foot in the batter's box, puts the right one on the line or outside of the batter's box as he'll do it again here. He's deep in the box, standing kind of in the middle of the box, going the opposite direction width-wise. 1-0 offering, there's going to be a ball hit foul, so that'll even the count at one ball, one strike. And did get official word from our stats guy here at the ballpark. At beautiful Ernie Vivian Field, those last two balls put in play were, in fact, ruled infield singles. So just tough luck, second of which obviously going for an RBI and getting the merchants on the board. So still bases loaded with one out here. One ball, one strike count. And looking back in is Damel. 1-1 one, one offering. That one called strike two, just caught the outside part of the plate. So that takes a one ball and two strikes. And Damel looking for out number two here. With the bases loaded, he's trying to get out of the jam as Rocker Bomber goes through the signs at home plate to his teammates on what they want to do defensively here. Now Damo will get set on the rubber, look back in after looking at his feet. 1-2 offering. There's going to be a ball ripped into left field. If that's going to get down, it does get fair. No, they say it's foul. They say it's foul. Put the brakes on. Go back to where you started because that is a foul ball in left field. I'll tell you what, man, that ball was bang, bang, and I know we're a far, we're far away to away, but where that one dropped, um, I think the Renegades are, are feeling pretty lucky right now that at least two runs have not crossed the plate. But here's what you do now as Colin Damel. You take advantage of that and come right back and punch him out right here after getting a call to go your way like that because I think that one was so close. It could have just as easily been ruled a fair ball, and I think the batter still believes that that was a fair ball in Michael Alt. Yeah, I don't know if that was a fair or foul ball but from here it looked like it was fair so either way doesn't matter what my opinion is as they'll say it is a foul ball as the first base coach will come down and have a conversation with the home plate umpire we'll say he had the best vantage point looking right down the line at it so he's got a better view than we do here did notice too this is a different crew than we had in the first game of the doubleheader so just notice that so now for Alt, he'll open that stance, open even more. It's about as open as the gate will go, but he found a way to open it a little more. One, two offering. That one's going to be right about the same place, and that one's going to go foul for sure foul as it kicks up the dust there down the third base line. That one easier to tell. Nothing you can argue about there. That one, like you said, not even near the, the line. It was into the, the, to the gravel out on the foul side of the left field line. So no debate there, and Alt will have to do it again. And Damo really continuing to battle. You're not even trying to make this thing close to where he could potentially lose all. Still had one and two. And despite giving up all the base runners this inning, has not had a lack of control outside the 1-4 pitch walk. 
So Damo will look back in as he's through the stretch now. Has been for the last several batters. Again, base is loaded. He'll check the runner at second, not being held on there. One, two offering. That one's going to be a ball, and it's going to be over the head of Hopkins. So one run will score. They'll throw to third base. Wilmsmeyer has it out at third. So they get the run, but they get it out as Wilmsmeyer gets it and tacks the bag for out number two as a good play right there from Wagner. Knew what the situation was and got the out. Incredible heads up defense there by Cole Wagner as even though that ball was hit hard, it looked like Hopkins would have a leaping, leaping chance at it and the runner on second not wanting to be doubled off just had to hold and with it being hit so hard, Wagner on one hop fired an absolute strike to basically Wilmsmeyer standing right directly on top of the bag and about a second in time to get the force out at third base. So force out there, that's two outs. Two runs, though, have been plated here in the top of the second inning. Damo will step off as he'll get the runner back on second base. That's Berg as Berg goes to second with the single. On first will be Ott. So Alt, rather. We have an Ott, they have an Alt. That pitch in there for called strike one. Still got to get Chris it should here, but that play by Wagner delivered to Wilmsmeyer at third base could end up being huge. Really a pick-me-up for the pitcher, Damo, and now let's see if we can pay his defense back by getting the last batter, Christian, to keep this a 2-0 game. So no balls and one strike. Next pitch, that one down central, called strike two as Damo looking to end the inning here by way of a punch out as Christensen 0 for 1 has a strikeout looking and is only at bat so far here in game number two. Expect him to go low and away here on this 0-2 pitch. So Damo will look back in. Long look in, he'll check second. 0-2 offering, there's gonna be a ball that goes foul, just about <laughs> took out his teammate in the on-deck circle. I don't know, we've talked about it, I don't know what the tensile strength of the netting is, but I can tell you it's least, it is at least one Parker Ingram. He, he fell completely back into that net and if not for the net, he would have fallen onto his back, but it was enough to hold him up. So like you said, enough weight to hold up. I didn't remember what the weight was when he read it off of Parker, but at least that much the net can hold. So still 0-2 as Damo will check on the runner at second. Now look back home, back to second, back home, 0-2 offering. It's gonna be a bouncing ball. Gorling will glove at first. He'll flip it underhanded to Damo for out number three. So it goes as a 3-1 put out here to end the inning. However, there were a couple of runs plated in the uh, frame for the uh, Merchants as they lead by a score of two to nothing. So we'll take a quick break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Moex Dock and Norm Direct is back better than ever. Much more than your number one ground shuttle transportation service to St. Louis Airport. Yes! Moex Dock and Norm Direct is mid-Missouri's leader in premier group travel. Sporting events, concerts, wedding receptions, the lake, winery trips, Branson, plaza shopping, reunions, pub crawls, group sizes from 1 to 100 or beyond. We do it all. Remember, we want you to ride Moex Dock and Norm Direct. At Centurion Cares, for more than three decades, their focus has been on exceeding customer expectations for contact center software solutions. Their innovative communication solutions include utility interactive voice response software that allows for smart communication features that let your utility deliver superior customer service 24-7. They also provide other streamlined services like automatic call distribution, automated customer callback, reporting, and quality assurance. To find out more about how Centurion Cares can help your business, call them at 727-421. 5300 or look them up online at centurioncares.com centurion cares innovative communication solutions so we go to the bottom of the second inning it'll be batters five six and seven two up for the renegades they'll lead off with their catcher and tj rocker bomber Rocker Bomber, he's listed at 5'10", 185 pound freshman. He is from Herman, Missouri, plays at Emporia State. He is a left-handed batter and throws right-handed. So he will lead off the inning here for the Renegades. Love to see the Renegades said this last inning, but uh, get some offense going early. I think as the number of the scoreless inning streak starts to get bigger and bigger, it just looks like it's gonna be harder and harder to end. Eventually, it's got a break, though. First pitch to Rocker Bomber, way outside from Neal, ball one. 
Yeah, bottom of the order here for the Renegade. Did be something if your your guys near near the bottom of the order. I guess we're in the middle here at this point, but really would give some confidence if all parts of the order can start hitting. 2-0 offering. Sorry, 1-0 offering. That one swung on a miss, even the count to 1-1. One one. I was going to say it is a 2-0 score in favor of the Merchants over the Renegades right now as we play here in the bottom of the second inning. Just past 8.30 here on the Show Me Sports Network. Blake Gazzaway here with you, joined by Ben Schmidt from the Doc and Norm Direct Broadcast booth. Whether you're listening by way of the app or the media center, we're just glad you're tuned in as that one down central called strike two takes the count to one ball, two strikes. So we're glad you're tuned in, however you're listening. Either way, on our media center, showmesportsnetwork.com, or our free app that you can download from your app store on Google or Apple. We're just glad you're tuned in. Also, head over to our Facebook page, Show Me Sports Network. Give us a like. Give it a share. That one fouled down the first base line, so we'll still stay at one ball and two strikes. So that was an electric play by our first base coach. On a hop, fielded the rocker bomber foul ball, and actually the emergent dugout showed him some love too. They went crazy when he barehanded that ball. Yeah, good play there in the first base coach's box. So one ball, two strike count. That's Tyler Brock, one of the assistant coaches. 1-2 offering, that one low and inside. Evens the count at two balls and two strikes. Like I said, though, if you're on social media, head over to our Facebook page. Just search for the Show Me Sports Network. We're also on Twitter. Don't Honestly, don't do a lot of tweeting, especially at the games, but you can give our page a like, give it a share, give us a tweet. You can let us know you're listening, you're enjoying it. There's a ball well hit, but it's going to go foul down the first base line. So that will still stay at two balls and two strikes. We always like to know where our listeners are at. I know the Forte family in Nebraska is always, uh, pretty much always listening, so we give them a shout-out. As, uh, like I said, you can send us a message or send us a tweet, and I just like to know that you're tuned in and enjoy the broadcast here on the Show Me Sports Network. So Neil will look back in. Left-hander's next offering on its way. There's going to be a ball, same place, a little less foul, but still foul nonetheless. Well, closer than the last one, so I guess that means Rocker Bomber's one step away from timing one up and sending it down that right field line. A good little battle here going on, and especially in a lefty-lefty matchup. Certainly harder for the batter as a lefty when you're facing a left-handed pitcher, but Rocker Bomber just continuing to battle, and that's all you can ask for, and eventually if this at-bat prolongs, he'll time one up. Well, this will be the eighth pitch of the at-bat is forthcoming. 2-2 two -two offering on its way. That one fouled straight back. So now we'll be next offering will be pitch number nine as Rocker Bomber clips that one on the way by and sends it right back to the netting back here. So still two balls and two strikes. Again, upcoming pitch will be pitch number nine of the at-bat. So Rocker Bomber again digs in on that left-hand side of the batter's box. Yo. Wiggle the bat a couple times, now get it set and ready. 2-2 two -two offering, there's a swing and a miss. That'll be out, number one. Yeah, tough pitch there for Rockabomber to handle. It was up in the zone, and it was a fastball, and Rockabomber tried to get up to that level, and even if he does get up that high, that ball is likely hit in the air and stays in play. So eventually with the pitch at bat going so long, you're looking to just hit everything, and sadly that's, I think, what led Rockabomber to strike out there. So this will be Carter Gorley, the first baseman, 6'3", 200-pound freshman. He's a right-hander across the board from the Woodlands, Texas. Plays at Colorado Mines. First pitch, he'll hit a bouncing ball. It'll be gloved at third. He falls down on his knees. Bad throw, but they say it got there in time. Yeah, it was in the dirt, but it was on one hop and a great stretch by the first baseman down there. And he's lipping a little bit. I don't think that stretch did a whole lot of good to his groin area. He laid out for it, and they were able to get the out by just a hair as this will be center fielder Ross Lovich stepping in now. For Ross, he's six foot, 170 pound sophomore, left-hander. Uh, throws and bats left-handed. He is from Overland Park, Kansas, and he plays at Mizzou, so he is one of the three Tiger trio. Here's first pitch to him in there called strike one. So he will be down in the count at 0 and 1 here to start off his first at bat here in game two as he's playing center field here for game two. Neil looks back in. 0-1 offering, that one upstairs. Even just uh, count on one ball, one strike again, two outs here in the bottom of the second inning. Lovich, a guy you know has the power in him, but at least over the past week 
has been sort of struggling at the plate. And when he's on, he's a guy that you're going to stick in the top of the order, but move down a little bit tonight as he looks to find a, a little bit of that swing. So one ball, one strike count. Again, two outs here. Neil's next pitch. That one, they say, he went around. Tried to put the brakes on, but that will be strike number two. So one ball and two strikes now as we play here in the bottom of the second inning. Two to nothing in score in favor of the Merchants. Neil looks back in. He'll get the sign from his catcher. That's Buss. Now it's 1-2 delivery. And that one's going to be a bouncing ball foul into the dugout of the Merchants. So that will still stay at one ball and two strikes. A little bit certainly out in front of that off-speed pitch there. But in that situation, all you're trying to do is make contact. And even though he didn't put it in play, that's enough to keep the at-bat going. <laughs> oh, that got a huge smattering from the fans here. One, two, a pitch. That one swung on in the dirt. And that is out, number three. As nope, three. Ball. Oh, they say fouled it off. Thank you. I was too busy trying to figure out if I needed to run for cover with Rowdy here or not. So one ball, two strike count. Hey, you missed your catcher there. Well, thankfully we've got Taylor Hopkins to go over and pick up the uh, missed throw there. But, yeah, that last pitch was certainly well in the dirt. And Lovich, just enough contact to keep his at-bat alive, and I've done the same thing. Obviously, you've done it for much longer than I have, but I'm looking down to my scorecard and look up, and it's like, oh, at-bat's still going. So one ball, two strike count. This will be pitch number six of this at-bat. Lovich digs back in, one-two offering that one high and tight. So he'll take it, two balls and two strikes. In the on-deck circle is shortstop Taylor Hopkins. If he could find a way to get on as well as Lovich, then it would be second baseman and Andrew Imgarten. He is the new addition to the Renegades. First game he's played in the Renegades uniform. 2-2 offering. That one hit. Lovich, so he will be awarded first base as he is hit by a pitch. Plinks him on that right shoulder, that leading shoulder there as he's a left-handed batter, but he says he's okay. So this will be a shortstop in Taylor Hopkins. As for Hopkins, see his cheering squad has made their way out. 5'11", 190 pound freshman. He plays at William Woods, right-hander across the board. He is a hometown boy here in Jefferson City, as I said. His family and friends always have a good presence at the ballpark here. Enjoyed getting to uh, talk to them and getting to see them at many of these games here so far for the Renegades. I haven't missed any of them. I just haven't had a chance to talk to them at all of them. So two outs, runner on first. First pitch to Hopkins. They'll say he uh, went around for strike one. So that will be no balls in one strike. Again, Rowdy has made his way out to the ballpark here at historic Ernie Vivian Field. Walking around, enjoying, waving to the crowd and interacting with them. Neil will look in. Now he'll look to first. 0-1 offering on its way. That one fouled out of play. So that makes it 0-2 as that pitch was headed for Rowdy. So... Going back to that at bat two for Lovich to keep this inning alive, obviously you'd rather get on base from a hit or even an extra base hit, but the fact that he was just able to battle in that situation, foul off pitch after pitch, and then be rewarded with heading down to first base, I know it's a hit by a pitch, not the prettiest way, but that's an excellent at bat and one the Renegades need. So no balls and two strikes. Again, two outs here. That pitch way outside. As that makes it one ball and two strikes. That was... Quite a ways outside as the catcher and bus had to leap over to get it to keep in front of him. So Hopkins will dig back in. And right-handed batter has two outs here. One, two count on him. Has a runner on first base. That's Lovich. So Neil will look back in. He'll check over to Lovich on first. Second look back in there. Long look in that time. One, two offering. That one inside and low. Not even the count of two balls, two strikes. Bus trying to frame that, but... A little hard when his hand is turned the opposite way. He can't really get the good frame he's looking for on it. So two balls, two strikes, two outs. 2-0 two score in favor of the Merchants. Neil looks back in. Now checks the runner again. Left-hander's next delivery. That one's going to be down and inside, and they say he went around. I don't know about that. So that will be out number three. So the Renegades, no runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. As so we will go to the third inning of work, and it's still a two to nothing score in favor of the Merchants. So we'll take a break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades baseball here 
on the Show Me Sports Network. Last Sentinel Firearms is your federally licensed and registered Type 7 FFL manufacturer dealer in Missouri, providing quality products to all types of sports enthusiasts, law enforcement, and individuals across the nation. Orders are currently being fulfilled offering custom-built pistols and rifles from the AR platform made right here in Missouri. Visit their website at lastsentinelfirearms.com or call them at 417-684-7202 to find out what they've got for you. Last Sentinel Firearms, you are your last line of defense. Running out of some of your favorite Avon products and haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time? No need to worry. Avon Independent Sales Representative Michelle Carty can help with your skin so soft, makeup, jewelry, fragrance, and skin care needs. Avon now carries cleaning supplies, clothing, daily essentials, and several small LG electronic items. You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 and have your order shipped directly to your front door by shopping with Michelle at mcarty.avonrepresentative.com. Dot com or find her on Facebook by searching Avon Carty. So we will go to the top of the third inning here as the Renegades trail by a score of two to nothing. We've got our special guest now here and Xander Lovin and Xander. It's a little been a little while since we've seen you, but welcome back to the squad. We're excited to have you back. Thank you. I'm excited to be back. You spent some time with the Renegades last season. We spent all season with the Renegades, and then uh, you had a chance to keep uh, keep pitching and uh, playing the Northwoods League a little bit. Yes, I did. That was a lot of fun. What uh, what team did you end up pitching for there? I played for Rochester Honkers. I couldn't remember offhand. They have some very interesting names for their teams there. Yes, they do. It's a lot of fun. So first pitch here is Damo facing the 3, 4, and 5 batter. This is Ingram due up as strike one. That one misses low and outside. They'll leave the count at one and one. So last year you had uh, you had some good showings with the Renegades. You were pivotal down the stretch there for us, and then uh, like we said, had a chance to keep going after the season. But what uh, what made you want to come back to the Renegades this year? Oh, well, it's close to home, and I like the environment. And just team. yeah, and the team. And there's lots of guys from last year that are coming back as well. So it's nice to see them again. Right. So that uh, swung on and miss. I'll leave the count at one ball and two strikes. Okay. So we know that uh, for you coming in, we uh, uh, we didn't get to see you yet this season, but you've had some things that you needed to uh, to do, but we should see you here in the second half of the season, hopefully. Right. Yep. I've spent some time working and just training, trying to get better so that I can show out in the second half of the season. Absolutely. Well, we're glad you're back. One, two offering. That one in there called strike three, as that will be out number one. Now this will be first baseman in uh, Garrick Freeman. He will step in. He was 0 for 1. And his first uh, first at bat, only at bat so far that he's had. Well, for the Renegades fans that uh, maybe aren't familiar exactly uh, with you, you want to tell them a little bit about where you grew up and uh, where you play college ball? Yeah, so I'm from Columbia, Missouri, which is only 20 minutes away about. Went to Hickman High School, and then after Hickman, I had the opportunity to continue playing at North Central Missouri College, and now I play at Northwest Missouri State. Absolutely. It's a good, good program there they have, and – and uh, obviously it produces a lot of good ball players from there. Yeah, we've had a few guys on the Renegades the past few years from Northwest as well, which is nice. So Freeman steps in here as Damo looks in. First offering, Woo! swung on and missed for strike one. So any uh, any different looks we may see from you this year or still going to bring kind of the same heat you had last year? Um, I'm starting to develop a cutter that I might try to work in. I've talked to TJ, the catcher, about it. It's getting it called, so we'll see. It's just a work in progress. Right, right. Yeah, and this is a good time, too, with the uh, with the summer to kind of work on those things. You get a chance to maybe develop a little bit. That one misses low. That'll even count at one and one. Do you know when, uh, when we may see you on your first start? Uh, I was texting coach today, and I think I'll probably appear in Sunday's game. Okay, well, that'll That's be good. Like. like I said, when I uh, was looking at the roster and knew who we had coming back and who was going to be here, I was definitely glad to see your, your name there, that one upstairs and inside. So how's the atmosphere for our squad compared to uh, to the Honkers team, to the Honkers squad? Uh, the community aspect is a lot of the same. Like a lot of like the um, people that work here do like bring in the same energy. Mm -hmm. They bring in a little bit more just because it's a bigger town, but I can definitely see the Ren Renegades developing work, into something like that. Absolutely. That one swung on, that evens a count of two balls and two strikes. So Namel trying to 
loosen up a little bit and what were your thoughts on the first game here, the doubleheader? I actually was working, so I didn't quite well, make go. it down, unfortunately. I tried to, I didn't get right at the last half of it. Damo will look back in, 2-2 offering. That one a bit inside, so we'll go full, three balls and two strikes. So if you were out here on the mound in this situation, uh, what would you look to, to do here? Um, I like throwing curveballs 3-2, because usually I don't bring them out early in the count, and so it can be something that the batter hasn't seen in a while and catch them off guard. So we'll see what Damo will offer up here on the payoff pitch. That one downstairs and walked him. So one out walk issued to Freeman. So he struck out his last at bat, walks this one. So now this will be uh, Jordan Matthewson, the second baseman. He flew out to left field. I've seen you at least uh, once or twice at some games here leading up to it. So how's that uh, going with the new squad, getting to know everybody, getting the confidence in the players to, uh, you know, you're a team, you're a squad, but that doesn't mean that you still don't need to have that confidence that they're there with you. Right. It doesn't take too long to get used to the guys, especially knowing some, some people who are already on the team. So I was able to integrate pretty quickly. So Absolutely. So Damo will look back in. And faces a new batter here in Matthewson. That one a bit upstairs. Takes the count to one ball and no strikes. So for our listeners, what's kind of your pregame uh, ritual or your routine that you go through? Um, I usually start about an hour 15 before game time if I'm starting. And I'll start doing some foam rolling and the crossball stuff. And then start running and doing some dynamic warm-ups. And then I'll throw my plyo balls, do J-bands and few stretching if I feel tighter in the area, and then I'll do long toss and get on the mound. Perfect. One one count now as that pitch swung on and missed. That one's going to be in there for called strike two, so that'll be one ball, two strikes now. And Damel trying to work out of giving off the one-out walk as he will step back on the rubber. Long look in. Now he's set. Rocker Bomber gives him the right sign. Swung on and missed for out. Number two, so he is trying to work out of this uh, this walk here that he gave out with one out. Now this will be the catcher and Noah Buss. Buss had a single his last at bat, was able to score a few batters later. With the uh, heat today, does it change if you were out on the mound pitching? Does the heat change anything for what you do? Yeah, I'll usually spend a little more time just so I can have breaks in between my sets so then I can make sure that I'm staying hydrated and not overheating before I get onto the mound. And yeah, we don't play too many doubleheader games, so when we do, it's a little brutal on everybody. There's going to be a ball ripped foul over the third base line. So Bus will be down in the count at 0-1. How did the uh, how did the season finish last year for the Honkers for you guys? Um, we ended up missing playoff contention by one or two games. We ended until right at the end. I think we had six players. That one's going to be hit by pitch for Bus. I think that we have six, five or six that ended up going playing in the in the league. Yeah, there. I know. Saw some familiar faces for sure. Was that a little different that you guys were in different uniforms? A little bit, but it's still nice seeing the guys. Absolutely. I remember seeing Andrew Patton with the Larks, and I think he's back up there again this summer. Yeah, you know, that's the thing is you guys might be, uh, you know, enemies or friendly enemies and then you come together for the summer and then uh then you guys kind of all went back and you know were were at least for okay, for the nine innings or whatever the game was you guys were on opposite sides but always you're right a good time to see a friendly face like that yeah it'll be nice seeing colin and tj next brain as well since they're both in the same conference as northwest that pitch is gonna be low and outside ball one as this is andrew schroeder the shortstop yeah, it kind of gives you, you know, that different perspective of uh, that you can, you know, be, be friends and, and to have that common goal. But then, you know, you see them on the field and you're on opposite sides. You put that aside and play the game fair and then meet up afterwards and have a good time again. Yeah, exactly. That one in there called strike one. Sorry, that is strike one. First one was ball one. That one called strike one. So evens account one ball, two strikes. Sorry, one ball, one strike. Two outs on the board. I'm just thinking ahead here that Damel's going to get this second strike. He'll look in at second base again. That one missed outside, so that takes it two balls and one strike. Colin, we've kind of talked a little bit, at least in other broadcasts, about uh, 
Uh, Damel coming in last year being an infielder and then switched uh, pretty much in July to a pitcher. Now this year he's straight on pitching and done well. There's going to be a ball that's going to be hit up the middle. Diving glove at second throw to first. Just say in time for out number three. That goes as a 4-3 put out to end the inning as M. Garten redeems himself from the play earlier that he had no throw on. As he stops that, gloves it, throws the first in time, and that retires the top of the third inning. Well, we're going to take a quick break and be back. Uh, Xander, any final thoughts before you get out of here? I'm excited to be back with the team. Well, we're glad to have you back. Appreciate you taking time to come up and chat with us. So I'll let you get back to the dugout here. So we're going to take a quick break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Serving the capital city and the surrounding area for 70 years, Animal Medical Center strives to provide the best possible medical service for your pet in a caring atmosphere. To promote quality healing and preventative care in a fear-free environment, Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City is a full-service veterinary hospital. Whether your pet has fur, feathers, or scales, Dr. Greg Boyer and Dr. Kayla Terry have the experience and expertise to treat complex medical conditions as well as providing annual well checks and vaccinations. Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City is the only veterinary hospital in the capital city accredited by the American Animal Hospital Association. To schedule an appointment, call the team at Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City at 573-636-4626. At the Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. We know that you're more than just a subscriber. You're an employer. You're a parent. You're a neighbor. Most importantly, you're a community member. It's our goal to provide you with the latest news, sports, opinions, obituaries, classifieds, and more to keep you informed about your community. To find out more about the Boone County Journal or to subscribe, call 573-657-2334 or visit bocojo.com. The Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. we go to the bottom of the third inning. This will be Andrew M. Garten. I don't have any information on M. Garten. So he is a new player for the Renegades. Work on getting that for him. As he is a left-handed batter playing second base today. So he will lead off here in the inning. That pitch low and outside. That takes the count to one ball and no strikes. And we're having a few technical issues trying to work through those. Get us back on air here. One ball, no strike count. That next pitch, that one is low, so that'll make it two balls and no strikes. Again, this batter's nine. One and two coming to plate. So Neil will look back in. That pitch also misses. So that makes it three balls and no strikes. So three balls, no strikes again. Nobody out here. And his first batter of the frame. He will look back in. 3-0 offering. That one down central called strike one. So that takes us to... Three balls and two strikes. Would be a nice introduction to your new team if you can reach base here in your first at bat. Especially when you're trailing, you need to get something going. No better way than to lead off an inning getting on in your first at bat with a new team. So I think maybe we fixed it as that one is going to be a free base issued to M. Garten. I think I keep calling him. I apologize if I've called him Ingram a couple times. M. Garten. Now we should be back on air for the broadcast. So if you're listening, I apologize. Trying to call, fix our issue and get us back on, but I think I got it fixed now. So now we'll go back to the top of the lineup to a left fielder in Cole Wagner. He hit into a 1-3 out his first at bat. A lot of space on that right field line. I'd love to see him pull one down there and send it to the corner. So 
Abel step in as Neal long look in over to first base. Now first pitch in there called strike one. M. Garten again on first base. So I think we fixed our technical problem so far. So we're glad you're rejoining our broadcast here. Still a 2-0 score. That one on the outside part of the plate for called strike two. I hope the broadcasts when I was gone during that interview missed their first half inning without me since last Thursday. So I hope you enjoyed it while you could because now I'm back in here for the next yeah. three and a half innings. We had a great conversation with, with Xander, and I've actually seen him several times here at the at the uh, park so far this season, but there's going to be a ball that's ripped foul. Man, if that ball could have stayed in play and had made its way down the left field line, that would have been – that would have put the Renegades in business because at minimum you're looking at second and third, nobody out, and – Obviously, with a new player, you don't know how much speed you got you're working with at first base, but at the very least, if that ball's down the line, you're going second and third. Absolutely. Now, I was saying, though, I've seen Xander here, talked to him just a little bit, but uh, wanted to bring him on, but obviously that one foul tipped, not held on to, so we will do it again, but obviously maybe not the uh, the uh, right interview for you, Ben, because, you know, he's a new player to you, but he played with the Renegades last year, so I have a little bit more context of what his season was like last year. And then he went on to play in the Northwoods League, played with the the Honkers. I forgot what town they're in, but he had uh, did a good job in their rotation for their late-season push to try to make the playoffs. So Neil again looks over at M. Garten on first base. 0-2 offering. That one swung on and missed for out number one as Wagner is retired for the first out. That will be third baseman Ty Wilmsmeyer. He gave the ball a ride in his last at bat, just came up short of a home run. And one more comment about the interview that just took place in the top of the third. Any ball club at any level, whether you're here at the Mink League Summer Ball or the Majors, you can always use pitching, and the Renegades will gladly take that. Despite they have some good pitchers, you can always use more. Absolutely. So one out now as Wilmsmeyer steps in, throw back to first base. M. Garten back safely, no problem there. Yeah, you were absolutely right on that. There, there's kind of a, a line of thought, a, a possible line of thought, to look to uh, have a June pitching rotation and a July pitching rotation. First pitch to Wilmsmeyer, he'll foul that out of play, strike one. Well, it's interesting because we just saw Carter Gorling move into the rotation in his last start, and initially he even kind of he, he even mentioned this after his start when he came on about potentially moving into the bullpen, but now I believe he's scheduled to make another start, so that could be a thing as we're nearing the end of June. Maybe we'll see a little bit of shift in the five that are coming through the rotation every five days. So Neil will look couple times at first base. Now he'll stare down at home. That pitch outside, they'll throw back to first base. Back safely is M. Garten. So I'll even the count of one ball and two strike, or one ball, one strike. Boy, I'm all I'm all sorts of crossed up. Yeah, well, that play at first base was a lot closer than it had to been. M. Garten decided to go back in standing, and the first base made a pretty, it's pretty snap tag there, and although he was on top of the bag, it was closer than it could have been. It was almost disaster for the Renegades. So one ball, one strike count. Neal's next offering, that one in the dirt, bounces across home plate, so that will push it to two balls and one strike. Jack Matashak in the on-deck circle. If Wilmsmeyer and Matashak could get on, then it would be designated hitter Brendan Perkins would be due up. We're going to start a rally in this game and at the same time break a scoreless streak. I don't know if there's a couple batters that you'd want up in this situation for the Renegades, then Wilmsmeyer and Matashak, consistent pieces all season long. Yeah, the only other one would be Luke Fuller, but he's not playing here in game two. That one's going to be a well-hit ball. It's going to get down in center field, and it'll be runners on first and second with one out here. Just exactly what you were saying right there, Ben, is he's trying to get the rally going, so it'll be first and second now for the Renegades with one out as this is right fielder Jack Matishak. Usually, as usually the broadcaster there, when you bring something like that off, it never goes well. And based on the law of the broadcaster jinx, Ty Wilmsmeyer really should have grounded into a double play there. But he made me look good and absolutely smacked the ball into center field. That ball was hit on the nose. Wilmsmeyer reaches first base safely, as I talked about. You know, one of the really, uh, really great things about the the uh, Mink League and summer collegiate baseball is, like I said, you get to see these guys. We try really hard, and Mike tries really hard as. Uh, He's recruiting these players to get local players that can come and play, and then you get a chance to maybe see them on. And like I said, 
I've already uh, told Alyssa, my our, uh, my daughter, she's six, so she'll be seven in October, but I already told her that this spring we're going to go to a few Mizzou baseball games and uh, watch watch a few of the players, the Lovich brothers, as well as Wilmsmeyer, play at Mizzou in the uh, in the spring. So we might try to make it to a few of the other games, but, you know. You should. Uh, Northwest, it's just a little little trek up there. We might try to venture up there and support some of the Northwest players we have. But it just makes it a really fun atmosphere to see them in the summer, and then you kind of, you know, become their fan, and you get to see them at a game and talk to them and catch up. It just makes it a lot of fun. So Mattishak will step in now as he's got one out here to work with, two runners on, and it's a 2-0 lead in favor of the Merchants, that one downstairs, ball one. So he singled in his first at bat. He is one for one here on the uh, game, this game two of doubleheader action against the Carroll Merchants. Cool story about uh, Wilmsmeyer, who's currently at first base, and I'll try and weave this into the next few pitches. But Wilmsmeyer currently starting at third base tonight, played second last week in Nevada. Something he does not do at Mizzou. At Mizzou, he's an outfielder, and that's where he plays during the, the spring season for the Tigers. One ball, no strikes. Neal's next offering. That one's going to be fouled off. It'll leave him the count one and one. Matishek tried to call time in there. They just did not grant it, which led to him having to swing late. But back to Wolmsmeyer, he actually volunteered to play infield last week, and that actually could not be a better thing for the Renegades because they have a lot of really good outfielders when you look at it. You've got Forte, Matishek, Wagner, Lovich, Oswin. That's just to name a few. Wolmsmeyer being another one of those outfielders, but to give the chance to get more of your best bats in the lineup, Wolmsmeyer being a team player, that's what you love to see, and that's real versatility. And Wolmsmeyer is making himself look good here. So one ball, one strike count. Neal's next offering. That one bounces across home plate. Runners are going to advance. They're going to throw down to second. Wilmsmeyer in there safely as M. Garten goes to third as well. Yeah, that's heads up base running right there as that ball got away. Didn't get away far and actually towards where the base runners were going as it kicked up the third base line. They decide to throw to second and it is a close play, but Wilmsmeyer enough speed to make it in there. And now one ball into outfield grass takes care of two things. Ends the scoreless streak and with the speed of Wilmsmeyer likely ties this game. Well, I talked about it too. Wilmsmeyer is just a very smooth player. That slide was just extra smooth out there. Slid in, no problem, was safe at second base. 2-1 offering. That one's going to be called strike two, so we'll go even at two balls, two strikes. You know, you talked about Wilmsmeyer being uh, very much a team player and, and not selfish, and, you know, I think we can say that for several of the Renegades players, Absolutely. if not almost all of them, is just trying to rally, come together as a team, be very selfless in uh, what they're doing here uh, this this summer. So 2-2 two -two offering from Neal. Uh, Matashak will foul that off, so he will still stay at two balls and two strikes. Interesting how this bat would have at bat would have changed for Matashek had they given him time earlier on. When I believe it was 1-0 or maybe even 1-1 when he tried to call time and have to foul the pitch off. Um, obviously, we don't know how that would have turned out had time been granted, but just something to think about in probably the biggest at bat so far this game for the Renegades. So still a 2-0 score in favor of the Merchants, but Renegades trying to rally. There's going to be a ball that's going to be fouled up. Catcher's going back. It's going to get out of play, hit on top of the roof. So as I said, the Merchants lead by a score of two to nothing here as we play in the bottom of the third inning. It is one out here, two balls, two strikes the count. M. Garten on third base and Wilmsmeyer on second. So Matashak at bat here trying to rally the Renegades up. He's got a 2-2 count on him. Neil will look in. Lefty looks in, shakes the head after he gets the sign from Buss. A 2-2 offering on its way. That one hit Matashak, so we'll have the bases loaded with one out here. Don't think that felt too good is because where that pitch was located, he started to turn like he was going to swing, so it actually turned into the ball, and rather than hitting him in the back, it hit on the inside of the chest, and thankfully he's all right, but just because of where that pitch was located, it uh, could have been worse, I'll say that. But now for the Renegades, lucky for them, they've got ducks on the pond. So base is loaded here. Designated hitter Brennan Perkins will step in. He reached safely in his last at bat, only at bat, reached safely to first base because of a fielder's choice that he hit into. So base is loaded. One out here. T.J. Rockerbomber will be in the on-deck circle. If Perkins could get on base. Obviously, he can't take a whole lot away from it because only now this is the third game between these two teams. But when the Renegades won a couple weeks ago, it was because they got out to an early lead and had good pitching. It's going to have to be a different story here tonight. They could still jump out here and coast to pitching the rest of the way, but 
Going to have to be a different version of the Renegades. So Neal looks in, first pitch, misses outside, ball one. And it's a 2 to nothing score in favor of the Merchants. is just after 9 o'clock, about seven minutes after 9 o'clock here on the Show Me Sports Network. Blake Gasaway here with you, joined by Ben Schmidt. Here at Historic Ernie Vivian Field from the Doc and Norm Direct broadcast booth. 1-0 offering. Perkins will foul that out. We'll go even at one ball, one strike. Yeah, for Perkins here, you're at the very least looking for a ball in play as long as it's not a ground ball right at someone. But with good, with pretty good speed at third base and at second as well, if you get one in the air, you're likely scoring a run. And even better, if you find one that touches outfield grass, you're likely scoring two runs. You just can't have a strike out here. So one ball, one strike count. Again, one out. Bases are juiced right now as we play bottom of the third. Next pitch, that one fouled back. Just got a piece of it. So that'll take the count to one ball, two strikes. Surely an enticing pitch for Perkins to try and do damage with as it was pretty much right down the middle, but it was up. And pitchers deciding to elevate there and make it look good for Perkins. It was out of the zone, but too much to resist and got under it and fouled it straight back. So one ball, two strike count. Again, one out here in the bottom of the third inning. Perkins will windmill the bat a couple times. Make that three times. Now he'll get set. As Neal will look in, he's got bases loaded here. One-two offering. That one swung on and missed. Four out, number two, as Perkins strikes out here for out number two. Now this will be T.J. Rockerbomber. He struck out in a nine-pitch battle his last time up. Yeah, so now it's going to take some two-out magic for the Renegades to get on the board here and get back into this game, trailing two to nothing. But Rockerbomber is certainly capable. We're going to have to do it some left-on-left -left crime here, but it will really like to see the Renegades just get any sort of momentum going on offense. So Neal will look in, bases loaded, two outs. First pitch to Rocker Bomber down central, called strike one. Well, he will be down in the count at 0-1. Again, M. Garten on third, Wilmsmeyer at second, Mattishak at first. It was a walk, a, a single, and then a walk. As what has moved runners around the base path gives us our bases loaded. No balls, one strike count, Neal's next offering. That one catches the outside part of the plate for called strike two. That's a tough pitch for Rocker Bomber. I mean, it's close enough to where you maybe swing at it, but I mean, really the only thing Rocker Bomber can do there is try and take that ball out to left field because it was on the outside part of the plate. So obviously not something that he was really looking for in that spot, so he took it, but it's, he's going to have to swing if that pitch comes again, but not a whole lot he can do with it. So 2 offering from Neal as bases loaded here for the Renegades. They trail by a score of two to nothing. 0-2 offering on the way. That one's fouled back. We'll do it again. Yeah, that one just dipping below the zone. Enough time for Rockerbomber to make contact and stay alive. And like you said, prolonged at bat the first time up and one that ended in a strikeout. But if Rockerbomber can start to battle here, already a mound visit this inning and pitchers warming in the bullpen, you think that he's going to maybe see a decent pitch to hit the longer the setback goes. Carter Gorling in the on-deck circle for the Renegades. An 0-2 offering from Neal on its way. That one's going to be swung on and missed for out number three. And the Renegades leave the bases loaded and squander an opportunity for them to push some runs across the plate. So we will go to the fourth inning, top of the fourth inning, as we'll take a quick break and be back. Two to nothing score in favor of the Merchants. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. When things come out of left field, having a game plan matters. Farmers Insurance has over 90 years of experience helping people play through every stage of the game. We've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything. Talk to Farmers Agent Christopher Scott at 573-896-0131 to see how I can help you stay in the game. That's Christopher Scott at 573-896-0131. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Underwritten by Farmers, Truck Fire Insurance, Exchanges, and Affiliates. Products not available in every state. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society. Jefferson City Chapter 10. Doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take the walk, Eddie. Hey. 
we go to the uh, top of the fourth inning here. As the Renegades trail by a score of two to nothing, Blake Gasly here with you, joined by Ben Schmidt from the Doc and Norm Direct broadcast booth. As Renegades, I said, trailing by a score of two to nothing. Despite giving up the two runs, I, I'm still impressed with what I've seen out of Damo so far in his three innings of work. He's been attacking the zone and has been able to work around some base runners. You have to remember, uh, the Merchants, when they scored the couple runs, had bases loaded in a couple different spots. That inning very easily could have got out of hand. We saw it happen in the first game when the Merchants put up a five spot in the sixth inning. So he has worked around, could be more trouble. Like I said, it's been attacking the zone, and there's no reason for me to believe that he won't continue to do that. And the line really, even though it shows two runs, he's pitched a pretty good ball game through the first three innings. Yeah, I agree with that. He Damel has done well. However, just again, the offensive struggle continues for the Renegades as they squandered a three base runner opportunity there. They had the bases loaded with a walk, a single, and a hit by pitch. Bases loaded and could not find a way to push any runs across the plate. So this will be batters 8, 9, and 1 coming to plate. This will be Jacob Rochester, the uh, designated hitter, first pitch he sees as ball one upstairs. And it felt like a couple of days ago when the Renegades really seemed to turn it on, we're in the midst of three straight. They were taking advantage of those opportunities. And then just the last, last night and today, they've come up empty on that same type of situation. That one in there called strike one, so evens account one ball, one strike. So Damo again, long look in here. This team sits at 9 and 11 on the season. That one down central called strike two. Good thing for the Renegades is even as they've dropped the last two games to currently trail here, they're in a division with a Joplin team that's leading it who also has a similar record, so still plenty to play for and also still very early in the season. That pitch upstairs, so that'll even the count, two balls, two strikes. Again, Berg in the on-deck circle, then Alt would be the one due up after that. I believe these two back-to-back -back base runners were the two that had the infield singles. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the two unfortunate ones in that second inning. That one misses, so that goes full now. Three balls, two strikes, if you're correct on that. You're remembering very well there. So three balls, two strikes. And Damo will get set on the rubber. Payoff pitch, swung on and missed for out number one. In a full count spot there, Damo basically said, here, hit my fastball, see if you can. And once again, not being afraid to attack, came with the heat there and swinging right through it for out number one. So good work getting back to it here in the top of the fourth. Well, this will be Kyle Berg, the right fielder. As you mentioned, he was part of the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back singles, and he had an RBI single in the middle of those three singles in back-to-back -back fashion. First offering to him outside, ball one. Sure, the Renegades would... Uh, we like to see the strikeout stuff continuing for Damo. He's had a bit of it sporadically throughout the first three and a third innings that he's pitched, but I'm sure they prefer that, obviously, than the slow ground balls that just found ways to let merchants reach base. That one catches the outside part of the plate, evens account one ball, one strike. And Damo has had six strikeouts here in the game so far. He has had three each way. So one ball, one strike. Next pitch. That one gets by Rocker Bomber. It was low, so that takes it two balls, one strike. And pretty good contingent of fans have hung around for game two here of a doubleheader. Absolutely, and hopefully, obviously, the outcome could be a, a bit different, but they've been put to a good pitching performance by Damo so far. He could reach double-digit strikeouts, which I don't know off the top of my head if that's been done by a Renegade starter. 2-1 offering on its way. There's a bouncing ball as Perkins will knock it down but can't get a glove on it at short. That'll be... A single. Almost the same type of thing there that happened the first time up. And even if Taylor Hopkins fields that ball cleanly, I really don't know if by the time he pops up has enough arm to get Berg. Because that was once again pretty deep in the hole. And that's living right if you're Berg back-to-back -back times where you put it about as deep in the shortstop hole as you can without going into left field. And he's rewarded now with two hits and two at-bats. So now we'll go to the top of the lineup in center fielder and Michael Alt. As Alt will step in again. Left-handed batter, he is one for one with a walk, has an RBI as well. First offering to him, downstairs in the dirt, Rocker Bomber keeps it in front of him, so that'll make the count one ball, no strikes. 
Again, as we play here in the top of the fourth inning, it's a 2-0 score in favor of the uh, Carroll Merchants from Carroll, Iowa. Damel gets the sign from Rocker Bomber. 1-0 offering. There's going to be a ball just through the bat out to it did Alt, and he fouls it out of play, so it evens the count one ball, one strike. Obviously getting to see very limited action against Alt and this entire Merchants team, but with the fact that he takes the giant leg kick, bringing that right leg all the way in, I have to believe if he gets a pitch and turns on it that that ball goes a long way because he's bringing a lot of power with that leg kick into his swing. 1-1 so offering. That one misses, so not sure where, but... Had looked good from here, I'll say about that much, but. That'll make it two balls, one strike. You get that call if you're pitching seven shutout innings. Maybe not in the uh, fourth when you're even up two runs so far. Not to say that Damel's pitched bad. 2-1 offering, there's gonna be a slow roller. Damel will glove, turn and throw to second and just rainbowed it too much. He was falling off the mound and could not get the throw and everybody will be safe. Yeah, rainbow or lollipop throw is about the best way to put that. Is even though he looked like he had a play at second base, it just got there way too slow. And maybe in that situation, you take the sure out at first base. And I think he knows that too because after making that play, he turned and faced Rockabomber and tapped his chest almost as if to say, "Yeah, my bad." So taking responsibility for there uh, on a play that should have at least gotten the run gauge run out. So now this out. will be third baseman and Seth Christensen. So Christensen. Is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Hit into a 3 1 out. That pitch way outside, ball one. Going back to that last play, I think Damo is seeing that neither the shortstop or second baseman are at the bag, so maybe that's why he tried to loft it and get it there at the same time. When in reality, those guys are moving pretty quick, so if he puts that one on a line, the ball and, and second baseman or shortstop probably both get there at the same time anyway. So one ball, no strike count. That pitch. Misses inside, so that'll make it 2-0. Saw it earlier where Damel just, for a batter, kind of lost control and had a four-pitch walk, and he's been back on it ever since that, but maybe we're starting to see one of those at-bats where you just can't find it with either the fastball or the off-speed. So two balls, no strike count. Runner bluffs to third. That ball's going to be fouled out of play. Obviously, I was wrong because that pitch we had no problem finding the zone. That went almost right down the middle. And Christensen fouled it off, so Damo looking to not suffer any loss of command despite being down, still two to one in the count. So Far two balls, show. one strike count. Yep, not sure what they're celebrating over there, but two on offering from Damo will be forthcoming. Now it's on its way. Yeah. That one swung on and missed. So we'll go even at two balls and two strikes. Again, Parker Ingram, the left fielder in the on-deck circle for the Merchants. Interesting swing there by Christian as that ball was almost in the glove of Rocker Bomber when he started to go into it. I think that's a pitch where he knew and then kind of just stabbed at it for dear life. Not really a uh, normal swing there. So two balls, two strike count. Damo gets set. Runner goes to third, ball gets past Rocker Bomber. Now the runner to first will go to second. That one will surely be ruled a wild pitch and really no chance for Rocker Bomber to nab that one. He was set up more towards the inside part of the plate and that one all the way outside to the right side in the left side batter's box. I just said a lot of directions there that didn't really make sense, but point to make is that one sailed to the backstop. So that puts Berg at third base with a stolen base. Alt moves to second on the wild pitch. And with that pitch, 3-2 is our count now. So we go full with one out here, 2-0 offering, sorry, 2 to nothing lead for the Merchants as the 3-2 uh, offering on its way from Damel. That ball's going to be lifted left field. Going back on it is Wagner. He'll go back, and he will make the grab. So run, run will score. However, he throws on the money to third. And, and they're going to rule that play. a double play because they say they the runner left step early. On it. I was going to say that I thought he didn't touch and go home, but what do I know? That is heads up baseball, too, by not only to throw it into third, but then by Wolfmeyer to go step on the bag, having an inclination that the runner may have left early. So that will erase the run off the board as the head coach for the Merchants is having a conversation with the home plate umpire. I don't, I don't want to say I was right, but I thought he didn't tag and just went home, but... 
I'm not wearing the right color. Sh- well, I guess I do have a black. I do have a black shirt on. Yeah, you could have gone on, out so. there and make the call. <laughs> I was going to say my money says that Ashley has not fixed the scoreboard, but she actually did, so I was wrong. Well, we're going to take a quick break and be back. Still a two to nothing score. So we're going to take a quick break and be back. You're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Hi, this is Nick Hoslog, owner of Hoslog Landscape and Design. Every day, my highly trained team of experts works hard to give you the outdoor living area you've been dreaming of. By focusing solely on landscaping and hardscape construction, this has made us the preferred landscape and design company serving Jefferson City and the Central Missouri area. Thank you for all your continued support in voting us as winners of the Reader's Choice Awards and Jefferson City's Best multiple years running. When you are ready to begin your dream outdoor project, call us at 573-301-9464 to schedule an estimate or visit hoslaglandscape.com. Hi, I'm retired Army Sergeant Trent Dirks, and I want to tell you about an organization that saved and changed my life forever. Retrieving Freedom provides highly trained service dogs to veterans with disabilities and children with autism absolutely free of charge, thanks to the generous donations and support from people just like you. Experts from Retrieving Freedom help throughout the entire process from fostering programs through service dog placement. Retrieving Freedom gave me the skilled service dog, Tracer, who has been my best friend in my lifeline. To find out more about how you can get involved, volunteer, foster, or to donate, visit their website, Retrieving retrievingfreedom.org. Retrieving Freedom, changing lives through the training and placement of service dogs for veterans with disabilities and children with autism. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning, still a two to nothing score in favor of the Merchants. As this will be batters six, seven, and eight due up. This will be Carter Gorling, then Ross Lovich, then shortstop Taylor Hopkins will be the three due up. No better way to build off the momentum that you just got on the double play than to come back out and put some runs on the scoreboard. Tires here in zeros. So Neil will look in here. His first offering to Gorling. Low and a bit outside, ball one. Merchants had a couple pitchers warming up in the bullpen last inning when the Renegades loaded up, so it'll be interesting to see what the leash is for Neal this inning coming out for the fourth. So Gorlin will dig back in, a good right-handed batter. 1-0 offering on its way. That one upstairs, but called strike one. That one was just about as far on that top shelf as you could reach on your tiptoes, but somehow it was in there for a strike. Gorling, I uh, don't know how he compares to the rest of the Renegades roster, but looks to be one of the taller players, so maybe that threw the umpire off. 1-1 one, one offering. That one down central called strike two. So That one looked to be kind of at the knees. So Gorling is getting the wide strike zone here, at least vertically. Gets one up near the midsection and then another down at the knees, and I'm sure he's got to be thinking right now, what am I what am I supposed to wait wait for? So one ball, two strike count. Again, nobody out here. The on-deck circle is Lovich. That pitch, that one outside. So that takes it, two balls, two strikes. And we got to uh, see in game one, there was a uh, scout here for from the Giants organization. So he was here watching the Renegades play, scouting out a couple players. So talked to him just for a little while before the uh, game. So time called here by Gorling. I talked to him for just a little bit. I offered him a chance to come sit on the broadcast, which he very quickly declined and said, nope, that's not for him, so he'll stick to scouting. Yeah, I don't know the scout rules, but it would be interesting to see if they're allowed during a game where they're scouting to come on. That one swung on and missed for out number one. Regardless, it's uh, cool to have something like that here at a summer league baseball game, especially for a doubleheader, and um, just to know that you got someone paying attention. I'm sure I'm sure I added maybe a little jitters if the Renegades players knew about it, but also some hype as well. So it'll be uh, Ross Lovich, center fielder for the Renegades. So first offering to Lovich from Neal on its way. He's going to swing and miss. Swing in at uh, pitch in the dirt. So that takes it. No balls and one strike. Again, one out here. Hopkins will be in the on-deck circle. Then Imgarten. We do up after that. So 0-1 offering from Neal on its way. 
That one's going to be fouled back. I'm sure the sense of urgency is continuing to grow for the Renegades, not only just because they've had trouble scoring, but just knowing the fact that they've got 11 more outs. This game's going seven and not nine. So I know two innings doesn't sound like a big difference, but when you're sitting here in the bottom of the fourth trailing and you haven't scored yet, that seventh looks like it's coming, coming up on you pretty fast. So Neil will look back in. Again, one out here. His team leads by a score of two to nothing. 0-2 offering on its way to Lovich. That one downstairs inside. That'll make it one ball, two strikes. Kind of the same thing that happened in the uh, first at bat for Ross. Just fell behind, but then continued to battle, take a couple pitches, foul some pitches off, and then got rewarded with a trip to first base on a hit by pitch. It's not the home run or the double scored it down the line, but it raises your on-base percentage and it helps the team out. So 1-2 offering on its way to Lovich. That one's going to be a well-hit ball. Blistered into right field. However, the right fielder on it for out number two. Yeah, that's tough luck right there as he hit the ball well, but pretty much right at right fielder coming in. I believe that's Berg out there, although I'm not positive, but almost one where he didn't even have to move left to right, just come in a couple steps. And when it's going bad, stuff like that happens. But when it's going in, that ball somehow finds a way to get down and go to extra bases. So that'll come around. If, if Glovich continues to put balls in play like that, those will start to go his way. Well, this will be a shortstop in Taylor Hopkins. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout in his only at bat so far. So he'll dig in on the right-hand side of the plate. Two outs here. He'll send a ball straight up the middle. Two outs single. We'll put him on first base. Good for Hopkins there. Made good contact. And based on the sound of the bat, I don't know. Is it doesn't look cracked, but uh, may have to inspect that one and maybe give our friends at Walk Off Wood Bat Company a call. Absolutely. So I want to tell you about Walk-Off Wood Bat Company, handcrafted right here in Missouri. Walk-Off Wood Bat Company bats are made with premium grade maple, ash, and birch, fully customizable to make it truly yours. From the length and weight to the barrel and handle color, you're able to customize every feature of your wood bat, including personalized engraving with a 45-day warranty. Yeah, I had a, a chance to talk to Kevin, one of the uh, owners there that makes the bats. He said they had a, a youngster, I believe it was a 12U game, that had the bat one day and broke it and his uh, at bat, so he had another one. They jumped in, there's gonna be a ball lifted into center field, it's gonna get down. So now it'll be two outs with runners on first and second. However, base running air there as Hopkins overruns the base path, good throw from the center fielder, and that eliminates the inning as base running air, as you talked about it, when it rains, it pours. That's the case right there as bad base running, little mistake there, but cost them an out and ends the inning. As uh, we'll take a quick break when we come back, I'll let you uh, tell them more about Walk Off Wood Bat Company. So we'll take a quick break and be back listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Creating custom, handcrafted woodworking projects has never been easier. Become a member of Sawdust Studios and enjoy 24-7 access to a woodworker's paradise. Outfit with industry-leading, professional-grade tools, Sawdust Studios offers endless woodworking possibilities. Don't have woodworking experience? No problem, as Sawdust Studios offers affordable classes from a community of woodworkers, experienced designers, and master craftsmen. Youth classes are also offered for those junior woodworkers. For more information, search Sawdust Studios on Facebook or find them online at Sawdust Sawdust247.com. Sawdust Studios, your community wood shop. Hello, Blake Gazaway here with the Show Me Sports Network. I've had the opportunity to have some amazing calls, including overtime touchdowns, walk-off home runs, and buzzer-beating baskets. But I've answered another call. That's to serve my community as a volunteer firefighter. Stop and think what would happen if your home or property caught fire and no one was there to put it out. Every day, volunteer firefighters not only save lives and property, but also respond to other emergencies. Nearly two-thirds of our nation's fire departments are manned by volunteer firefighters. And because of this, we simply need more volunteers to step up and answer the call. Stop by or contact your local fire department and see how you can become a volunteer firefighter today. I answered the call to serve my community. Will you? Go to the uh, top of the fifth inning. As we were talking about walk-off wood bats, who find your confidence at the plate, call them at 816-261-1014 or visit wildbats.com. As first pitch, that's going to be fouled out of play. This will be Ingram, Freeman, and Matthewson due up. So Ingram will be down in the count at 0-1. As I was saying, I was talking with Kevin, one of the owners of walk-off wood bat. He was actually delivering the bats that uh, we've got. We posted on our social media, the red, white, and blue bats for 
the Show Me Sports Network that they made that turned out just spectacular. A one offering, that one downstairs, even the count, and one ball, one strike. So I was talking with him as he was dropping them off, and, uh, you know, he was telling me about that. I said, we, we've seen a lot of broken bats, but several of them we've seen have not been the, uh, the walk-off wood bat company bats. They've been other brands of bats, and that's what he was telling me, that pitch misses ball, too, that there was a uh, youngster, a 12U youngster that was playing in a tournament that uh, might have been the week or two before that. They brought some bats down, had a custom one made for him, and uh, he broke it that game. He had it about one day and broke it in the game, so they jumped in and made him a new bat. He was he was good to go, as that one is going to drill Ingram in the back, so he will be awarded first base with hit by pitch. So now this will be Garrick Freeman, the first baseman, stepping in. Yeah, Ingram not too happy about that one there, but obviously not intentional. You're not doing that. Down 2 nothing and nobody out and nobody on. But uh, regardless, he's going to take an extra few steps down the first base line and try and re recollect himself. I'm sure that didn't feel good as it was clearly a fastball but going back to the play that ended last inning too because not only was originally that play is not that that dumb of a play because Hopkins was a rounding second faking like he was going to go to third and normally you think the center fielder sees that and throws to third base and then you hopefully you get you get lucky and get a bad throw something like that allow the runners to advance but head center fielder was thinking two steps ahead and threw back to second base when nine times out of ten that throw goes to third so even though it's a base running gap for the Renegades, I get the thought process of Hopkins just ran into someone who was thinking a couple steps ahead. So Damo looks in, first pitch to Freeman. Swung on a miss, strike one. So that will put him down in the count at 0-1. As Damo again working in his fifth inning of action here. His team trails by a score of two to nothing. So he'll look in, Freeman. At bat here, 0-1 offering. That one upstairs, Rocker Bomber throws back. The tag is there. They say he's under it. Good idea, good idea. That was a snap throw there by Rocker Bomber. Damo. Good decision. Damo also with, the, I believe, the six strikeouts. I, I think that's still the number. As Ashley mentioned, if we were in St. Joe, would have gotten everyone here some free pizza rents. That's the promotion that St. Joe does. and Pretty interesting there, but Damo, one of the better strikeout numbers for a Renegade starter that I think we've seen. That one in there for called strike two. I think St. Joe's probably the closest pizza ranch there is here. Yeah, I, I was where there is. One. I was gonna say I, I know it from making trips to Minnesota, but there's none back home in Illinois, and certainly none around here. So, the one ball, two strike count. I bet you guys will eat there on the road trip going to uh, care, going to uh, Clarinda. There's gonna be a throw down to second. Stolen base ball gets into center field, and runner does not decide to go to third base. Probably a smart decision as coming in quickly was, I believe that's Lovich out there in center field. Yep, it is. And even though that ball skipped on in there, it was kind of an awkward play as when Rocket Brown threw the ball down, neither the second baseman or the shortstop were at the bag yet. And I guess it's be kind of a problem you experience when the, when your new second baseman is just joining the team. But I don't think either of them really took second base there and knew who was supposed to be on that play. And because of it, this ball went into center field. Well, you have a two-day road trip, or I guess I should say, Ben, you have a two-day road trip with the team coming up, going to uh, Carroll. So we'll play Carroll tomorrow and the following day. Last time I checked, too, some rain in the forecast for Friday. So Absolutely. I wouldn't expect anything away. different going to Iowa. 2-2 two -two offering on its way. There's going to be a ball lifted into right field. Going back on it is Mattishak. He'll camp out underneath and make the grab. He's going to throw a bullet trying to get to third base. Hopkins will cut it off. So we'll be out number one as Freeman flies out into right field. Talk about rain in Iowa. Renegades would have three more games played if not for rain. The only other time they made the trip to Iowa, cut the doubleheader with these same merchants in half and then canceled both with the Des Moines prospects. And like you said, wouldn't expect anything else. I think we're looking good for tomorrow night. But then the second of the two straight games, play that one, then head on home thanks to Doc and Norm. But I believe that one at least as of right now, in a little bit of jeopardy due to some rain. That's exactly what happened last year, too. We went to Iowa to play four games, played one. Happened this year as well. Just we didn't have as much flooding here in Jefferson City as we did last year when that happened. So first pitch to Matthewson. They're going to say he went around strike one. Renegades looking to prevent a run here as it looks at least initially that they've got the infield pulled in a little bit. Not a ton, but Gorling's and the third baseman Williams are only a couple steps behind the infield grass. I think they want to keep this at a 2 nothing ball game if a ball is hit on the ground. So no balls, one strike, one out. That pitch down central called strike two. For Matthewson, hitting short of the cycle by a triple. 
He's been held in check here in the second game of the doubleheader as he flew out to left field, then had a strikeout. Well, unluckily for the uh, Renegades, Matheson, on, uh, outside of maybe that last bat in the first game, I don't think he's put a ball on the ground tonight. So Damo will look in. 0-2 offering on its way. That one's going to be hit. Little blooper going back, and nobody can grab it as runner will go home from third as just hit, just a little squib hit off the end of the bat. Ends up in the uh, triangle there behind left field, third base. Coming over is Perkins from shortstop. Could not get there either. Just tough luck for not only Colin Damo, but the Renegades defense. As Wilmsmeyer and Hopkins both went out from the infield, and Wagner came in from left. And even with all three of them, three pretty fast players for this Renegades team, especially Wilmsmeyer and uh, Wagner, both outfielders, even at top speed, they couldn't get to that ball. And despite Taylor Hopkins' best diving efforts, he certainly laid out. No one was able to get that ball, and just tough luck for the Renegades continues today. You're absolutely right. I've never seen so many slow balls that have ended up being base hits. So this will be the line now, at least the, I should say the night rather, for a demo as we're going to have a pitching change here and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Throughout the course of any game, different actions stand out to different people. But everyone remembers a walk-off, especially if it's a walk-off wood bat. Handcrafted right here in Missouri, walk-off wood bat company bats are made with premium grade maple, ash, and birch, fully customizable to make it truly yours. From the length and weight to the barrel and handle color, you're able to customize every feature of your wood bats, including personalized engraving with a 45-day warranty. In addition to selling custom handcrafted bats, they also offer a selection of bat accessories, including lizard skin bat grips and batting gloves. To help find your confidence at the plate, give walk-off Wood Bat Company a call at 816-261-1014 or visit wowbats.com. We are state tech. We are hands-on education. When you choose the number one two-year college in the country, you know you will be ready for your career. That's why at state tech, we say from the classroom to your career, we are the employer's choice. We are State Tech. Well, our new pitcher in the ball game for the Renegades is six foot, 150 pound freshman Tanner Schmitz. He's a right-hander. He plays at Mineral Area Community College. He is a Jefferson City, Missouri native. Yeah, Schmidt's someone that this team has time after time called on, especially in multi-inning appearances. Shame they weren't able to use him out of the bullpen last night as he just pitched a couple innings a couple days ago. I believe it was maybe Sunday's game where he last pitched. But regardless, someone that has been up near the top of the pecking order when the bullpen gate opens. And I expect nothing less than him continuing to dominate out of this Renegades bullpen. Yeah, he's going to have close to uh, 20 appearances by the end of the season, I yeah, think. And I would expect north of 50 innings pitched because it feels like in most of those appearances he's going at least two innings, and I can think of two or three times off the top of my head when he's came in in the seventh and they're asking him to get the final three innings for a save. So one out runner on first base. Mitch's first pitch to Buss. That one's going to be hit foul. It'll get out of play. So one youngster will get to track that down and... Be interesting to see how Schmidt operates because so often it feels like he is coming in with a lead. Here, get the final three innings of work, nail down this victory for us. And I'm not saying that it's going to lead to different results because it's a different outcome, but I think maybe a little bit different when you come in trailing through to nothing and it's just, okay, don't let this get any worse. So one offering, that one upstairs and a bit outside to the left-handed batter and Noah Buss, the catcher for game two. He was actually the... Catcher for about half the game of game one, and so far caught all game two. As Matthewson will take a lead on at first base. Mitch will look in, he'll peek over that shoulder, 1-1 one, one offering. That one upstairs, that takes it to two balls and one strike. Yeah, like I said, not want to say that Schmitz is going to pitch worse, but it's kind of the thing where it's like, do you pitch a roll to Shaman in a non-save situation? Stuff like that. It just feels like every time that the Renegades are in a safe spot, it's Schmitz, and this obviously a much different appearance here. That one in there for called strike two. Is that evens account? Two balls and two strikes. As Schmidt's looking to retire the batter here and get out of the inning as quick as possible. With this game only being seven innings and 
only eight more outs to cover for Renegades pitching. Would not surprise me if at the very least they send Schmitz back out there for the six, maybe trying to finish the night off. There's going to be a slow roller. Schmitz uh, slips on the mound. He'll glove and throw to first, and they're going to say he's out as Gorling doing a nice job recovering, getting that ball in the dirt as Schmitz slipped off the mound but gets it. Goes as a 1-3 put out. That's a great call by the umpire despite the first base coach best efforts to say that Goring never had the ball in his glove. But we had a pretty good view of that one. And even though that one was in the dirt, Goring was able to pick it out and get it into this glove. And I think he's now maybe talking with a couple of the Merchants players in the dugout saying, yeah, guys, I, I had that one. That was an out. So now this will be shortstop Andrew Schroeder. See a few fans leaving. You tell them, hey, the game's not over. Got to hang around. We're just down by a couple... Grand, Grand Slam puts us in front. All right, that ball is going to get past Rocker Bomber. Very important here for Schmitz to not let Matthewson come home from third base. Obviously, one, you can't throw a wild pitch because if there we throw another one like that, that just happened, Matthewson can jog on home. But I'll tell you what, the team that's already struggling to score some runs, I'm sure three already looks even bigger than normal to them. And then four, I you just start to ask for too much to come back from, especially when you've only got three more trips to the plate coming up. So very important that he gets the batter right here. So Matthewson will be on third base. Bus, sorry, this is uh, Schroeder rather. Bus was retired in between these two batters. Now one upstairs. This is ball two. I'll tell you what, for the decent part, part of this afternoon, I didn't realize that he, uh, the Merchants jerseys had names on the back, and maybe it was just the camo that threw me off. That one, a little chin music as it ends up underneath the home plate umpire. Renegades get some fortunate luck there. It's not only one, it kicked off the backstop, it came straight back, and then stopped right under the home plate umpire, and no shot for Matthew to try and come home. Renegades catch a break there. Schroeder had to duck out of the way of that pitch. Chin music was a good way to put that, because that ball was up and in, and he ended up on his back. So three balls and no strikes. Again, two outs here. Schmidt's trying to get out of the jam here with a runner on third base. He'll look in. He'll get the sign. Take a deep breath. He'll come set at the waist. There's a 3-0 pitch. That one fouled out. That'll make it 3-1. and one. Well, if you're going to swing through, you might as well take a hack like that, as even though he was out in front, there was a pretty big uppercut in that swing, and he was trying to elevate there and go for the fences or do it again 3-1. Talked about liking these uh, jerseys for the merchants. I like their helmets, too. It's just a flat blue with the CM on the front of it in white. They look very stylish. 3-1 offering. There's a bouncing ball. Hopkins will glove it short. He'll throw to first. Gorling has it for out number three. And the blue helmet that you just mentioned has been spiked halfway down the first baseline in retaliation of the out call. Got to treat that helmet with respect there. So that'll go as a 6-3 put out. So in the inning, one run was plated, did have one hit, no errors, and they left a few on the base path. So we will take a quick break and be back. You're listening to exclusive coverage, Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. River Oak Christian Academy has been providing a strong biblical foundation and academic excellence within a Christian environment to students for more than 16 years. Located in the Jefferson City, River Oak Christian Academy offers kinder prep through 7th grade with 8th grade to be added in the 2023-2024 school year. River Oak Christian Academy's primary goal is the discipleship of the next generation to impact the world for Christ. Average class sizes are just 16 students with a student body composed of families from over 30 area churches. Kinder prep offerings include 3 and 5 full day sessions with kindergarten offering a half day and full day program. To find out more about River Oak Christian Academy, Academy, call them at 573-634-3983. Since 2018, Han Custom Laser Engraving LLC has been specializing in all things custom, using large format, high-powered lasers. With some of the most advanced technologies on the market, anything can become a canvas. The state-of-the-art system makes quick work of custom engraving on cups, glass, tile, wood, acrylic, metal, headstones with endless possibilities. They also offer custom one-of-a-kind signs that are sure to make your design stand out. Find them on Facebook at Han Custom Laser Engraving or call 573-489-8732 to find out more. Han Custom Laser Engraving, LLC, a veteran-owned business. Name's close here. They started the game with Blake Neal. Now they're on pitcher Pete Wheel. Yeah, I can. Uh, I'm glad you're doing the play-by-play -play for this one. As I'd, I'd certainly screw that one up more times than not. Everyone here knows the issue that I had with the uh, name Joplin for about a week until that finally got out of my head. And then back-to-back -back pitchers with similar names, who knows what would come out of my mouth. 
Well, we'll go to the top of the lineup here as this will be Wagner, Wilmsmeyer, and Mattishak will be the three due up. Just three, uh, three hits in the game, no runs for the Renegades. Seven hits and three runs for I know, the Carroll Merchants. I know I'm not supposed to be a fan on the broadcast, but I'm sure the other fans would like if one of those zeros in the score column before for the Renegades became even just a one or maybe even a two or eight or nine. Yeah, I'd settle for like a 14 or 15 right now. So Wagner will lead off the inning here. Big swing and a miss for strike one. Nobody ever said you can't be a fan here. I'm going to check because Pete Wheel looks like he's a pretty tall right-handed pitcher. So does not have it on this roster, but that guy looks like they're out on the mound. Like he is ready to just rear back and blow one past you. But, yes, back to the fan thing. I am more than certainly rooting for the Renegades to just absolutely unload on offense here. So we will look back in. 1-1 one, one offering on its way. That one low. It'll miss. Two balls and one strike. Judging by my mathematician and putting my thumb up in front of my eye, I think he's between 5-7 and 6-7. That well, one's going to be fouled back, so we'll go even 2-2. Two and two. If Google can help me out here, I will get you your answer in just a second. I think I'm pretty, pretty close to covering 5-7 to 6-7. It's a pretty good range. 6-2 is what I have here, so my eyes have I been I pretty deceived. much just split the difference there. I, I don't know why, but I just would have guessed like 6-5. He looks taller than 6-2 to me. But, yes, you did split the difference. So. so two balls, two strikes here. Wheels next offering that one outside and low. So we'll be full now here in the leadoff batter at the bottom of the fifth inning. Renegades trail by a score of 3 to nothing to the Merchants. How many hits do the Renegades have so far tonight? They have three. They have, have left six base runners on the base path, though. It just, it, it right now, and I'm sure it's feelings even worse than the dug. it just feels like it's a team that you're getting to these three ball counts and you feel like they're close and then it's a walk or, or an out, but just not in the hit column. Payoff pitch on its way. There's a ball that's fouled down the first base line. So they will try it again. Three ball, two strike. You know what we haven't seen so far is our Hey Baby dance off. Okay, it's coming. That's by far, besides coming to the ballpark for Renegades baseball and besides coming for the promotions we do, you have to come for our Hey Baby dance off here at the ballpark. We have some fun with that. And I can say I have never won one of those dance off. I believe in recorded ones, I am 0 for 1. So three balls and two strikes. That pitch upstairs. Staggers Wagner, he was trying to throw his bat and regain his balance, so leadoff walk issued from the new pitcher wheel. We'd we'll love to see Wilmsmeyer here take that one that he had earlier where he flew out just in front of the wall out in left center field, maybe add a few more feet to it and put it out over that wall and make it a run-run game. Wilmsmeyer steps in here, playing third base. He's pretty much Mr. Utility here for the Renegades. We've seen him play on the mound. We've seen him play in the outfield, in the infield. He's just got a catch now. That's what I was just thinking. The only place we haven't seen him behind home plate. Might as well let him have a chance back there. First pitch to him. Big swing and a miss for strike one. I mean, I think surely they could let him catch like one or two pitches maybe so he could just say that he's done it. Yeah, I believe it was uh, one of the Romine brothers in the MLB a couple years ago in a meaningless game. I think played all nine positions in one game. Maybe at the end of the year, have the Wilmsmeyer experience with that. Absolutely. Oh, an offering on its way. There's a big swing and a miss. They'll throw down to first base. Back safely is Wagner. Although Wilmsmeyer is a right-handed hitter, since he is, they pull the outfield around just a little bit, but there's now so much room down that right field line, and we saw him put one down there on Saturday, and it ended up with a leadoff triple in the 10th, and love to see him do that again, because, man, the dude, once he puts it in play, can absolutely fly around the bases. So no balls, two strikes count as Wilmsmeyer will dig back in. Wheel looks in, 0-2 offering. That one inside and low. That'll take it one ball, two strikes. You talked about uh, playing all the positions. I believe that uh, Will Farrell also has been known to do that a few times. He has. He's been I, known to what play for both teams too. And a third base coach coming out of the helicopter for one of the appearances. That was, that was one day. Go check out that video if you have not. One ball, two strike count. Wheels next pitch. That one's 
Going to be lifted high in the air. Lift fielder coming in. So does a shortstop. And nobody's going to catch it as they slide into each other. Everybody looks to be okay. But that thing hit a mile in the air. Lands fair. And nobody could put a glove on it as Wilmsmeyer gets credit for a single here in the bottom of the fifth inning. If that ball's hit a couple inches shallower, the shortstop makes a catch. And if it's hit a couple inches farther, the left fielder makes the catch. But just about as perfect of a spot as you can put it in. You have to hope both of them are okay and both still kind of bent over at the knees out there in left, shallow left field. I don't think they really collided too much. I think they just kind of got the wind knocked out of themselves as as uh, the right, the uh, left fielder rather kind of belly flopped out there. He looks like he's the one that maybe needs the most attention. I shouldn't say belly flopped, but was was diving for that ball and ended up on his stomach and hopefully nothing more than just maybe knocking the wind out of himself as he's down to one knee out there. And when the shortstop slid, I, I didn't see because I was more looking at the ball, but did he maybe slide into the chest of the left fielder? Because that looks like what is maybe in the most pain. I thought he took out the legs of the left okay. fielder, but again, I was watching the ball. I couldn't tell from here there's a pole in my way to see if either one of them caught it, but what I was watching for was to see if the uh, if the ball trickled out, which I saw the ball trickling out, and now that I say that, we I was confused. It's actually the shortstop who was the one that uh, took the brunt of that collision. Unfortunately for the Renegades at the lead runner Wagner, he was just doing his job there. He had to play about halfway between first and second because obviously he can't be picked off as that ball is caught. But when it trickled away, Wilmsmeyer, who was well past first base, couldn't go any farther just because Wagner was had to stay put at second base. So now this will be right fielder Jack Matashak. He was hit by pitch his last at bat, singled in his only a bat before that. First pitch to him. He's going to hit a little blooper almost the same place. It'll get down. Nobody's on third base. They'll put the stop sign up. So now it'll be bases loaded, nobody out. No reason to send Wagner there, especially with nobody out. And you're done th down three runs. You have to think the middle of the order is going to be able to drive him in. As even though may have had a shot there, bang, bang at the plate with Wagner and the fact that the player fell down. But uh, playing it safe there, runner just goes station to station. And you're right there, Mattishek putting that in about the same spot, just not as much air under it. And Renegades just sitting in a living right. Maybe the tides are starting to finally turn for this offense. So now the left fielder is actually going to come out. I don't know if he broke his glove. He needs a new glove or if he broke himself. He might be leaving due to injury just to batter later. Somebody go out in left field? Not yet, at least. Yeah, okay. I mean, Renegades would be okay play if they played without a left fielder, yeah. <laughs> So now they are going to send out a substitute player. So this will be a, a new player here. Let me find him on the roster. So this will be Danny Schweitzer. Played in right field in our first games. And now gets the other corner of the outfield. At the very least, you lose a big bat in that, uh, in that lineup with the left fielder leaving the game. Schweitzer from Vero Beach, Florida, plays at Iowa Western Community College. So now it'll be bases loaded, nobody out here. This will be uh, Brennan Perkins stepping in the designated hitter. First pitch from Wheel in their strike one. Yeah, by far the biggest opportunity for the Renegades, and I'll tell you, they have to take advantage right here. Already chilling by three runs, and if they go through the end of this fifth without tacking on at least one or a couple, it's... It's going to be real tough to climb out of it after this. They've got a strike now. Wheel checks the runner at third. 0-1 offering on its way. That one inside bounces across home plate. Perkins says, don't come home, boys. It's not a safe place right now. I believe I made a comment about a grand slam with the top of the last inning when I wanted the runner to stay at third base. So That would be if, if they hit a grand slam, everybody in the ballpark is going to get a bingo for Win It Wednesdays, because I think every card has has a grand slam on it. And in a blackout bingo, yeah, you're right. That's that's probably the reason I why we didn't have any yet. Yeah, I was we, surprised. We haven't had it. our winner yet because we haven't hit a grand slam. So Perkins represents the go-ahead run. He was swinging for the fences there. It comes up short. and will make it one ball, two strikes. Perkins had the two infield singles earlier this afternoon, had two of the five Renegades hits. And here, I don't think you'd want one in the infield. Does it mean at least one, maybe two outs? But one you just ball, need a ball in play. One ball, two strike count. Nobody out here. Wheel looks in. 
One two offering. There's a swing and a miss for out number one. Now this will be catcher TJ Rocker Bomber. He's 0 for 2, has a strikeout in his last two at bats, his only two at bats. So what a good time to get off the 0-2 Schneid right now to put it in play somewhere. And I'm sure Rocker Bomber's happy to see Neil leave the ball game. Had to face the lefty on lefty. And although he fell off some pitches, looked to be in a pretty tough spot there. So I'm sure if you're facing now a right-hander and wheel, he's feeling he's feeling a lot better. Not to mention has a lot of room down that right field line. One out here, base is loaded. Wheel looks in, first delivery. They're gonna say Rocker Bomber went around strike one. Tried to take it back, but could not. As our uh, game day staff here, not doing a very good job getting our fans rallied up here. The fact that we have bases loaded. One out here, we trail by three runs. Rocker Bomber represents the go-ahead run. Love to see Rock and Roller put one a gap here and really see Matishek get on his horse. Oh, one offering, that one upstairs, so that'll take it to one ball, one strike. Although the Renegades did have a little luck go their way to load the bases thanks to a couple blue pits and a walk, it would be a real shame for them to get through this inning without taking advantage of the opportunity. At the very least, you need to push across one here. So one ball, one strike count. We will look in. He'll get the sign, now he'll get set. 1-1 one, one offering, that one downstairs and low. That takes us to two balls and one strike. Again, runners on the base pass. Everywhere that can be occupied is occupied. Wagner on third, Wilmsmeyer on second, Matishak at first. Perkins was up, struck out, so now we're on to Rocker Bomber as the first three batters reach safely for the Renegades to start off this bottom of the fifth. They're trying to carve into this 3-0 deficit they face right now. That pitch upstairs, that makes it a 3-1 count. Rocker Bomber looks really good in this at bat. Had the check swing on a pitch that may or may not have been a strike, we won't know. But in the three pitches since, they haven't been incredibly far outside, but Rocker Bomber has shown no inclination to chase at any of them and now is rewarded with a 3-1 count. And just one more take is going to lead into a forcing run. But even if he doesn't, he'll get a pitch to hit and hopefully hammer it. So three balls and one strike again, one out here. As now we'll have a stalemate as Wheel steps off the mound. Again, Ashley Carty, our secretary, board member, scoreboard operator, entertainment, uh, entertainment wrangler, trying to get the crowd rallied up here. Three-one offering. That one's going to be a ball lifted into shallow center field. Center fielder coming in on it. He'll make the grab. Wagner's going to tie up. He's going to come home. He's going to be in there for the run. And it's going to be safe as Wilmsmeyer will go to third base. So Wagner breaks the goose egg. And now Wheels tried to challenge and say he left too early because that's what was the call for the merchants. And home plate umpire says, no, he did not. He is safe. I'll tell you what, I don't know the speed of everyone on this roster, but Wagner who's pretty fast, didn't beat that though by a whole lot as it was a good one in from center field by Ald out there on the fly to his catcher bus. And I can tell you for a fact, not everyone on the Renegades beats that throw out. And thankfully Wagner, one of them who can was at third base and finally gets the Renegades on the board after what's feels like an eternity. So now the Renegades trail by two at a score of three to run, three to one. They'll have runners on the corners. This is Carter Gorling stepping in now. He's 0 for two. First pitch to him, he's gonna send that one a mile in the air, it is gonna go foul. It must be getting out of play because I see people scrambling as it hits on the bleachers and goes over the back of the bleachers. Couldn't see it, didn't know if it was gonna be out of play, but judging by the reaction of everybody over there to our left getting out of the way, pretty good indication that it's going foul and out of play. So we'll be 0-1 now for Gorling as Ross Lovich is in the on-deck circle. He's been hit by a pitch. And flew out to right field in his last at bat. So Gorlin will dig back in. Again, runners on first and third. That pitch missed, ball one. So I'll even the count on one ball, one strike. Big thing from the sack fly just hit a moment ago is that Wilmsmeyer did move up to third base on the throw because now if you do have one that gets away with the speed of Wilmsmeyer, you're looking at a potential for a run to score on a wild pitch when that obviously can't happen if Wilmsmeyer's still standing at second base. One one count, Dorling digs back in. Matishak's gonna That's take- a balk, I think they called a balk. Yeah, it doesn't matter as there's nobody on second, nope. so Matishak just scampers down there. 
there was literally nobody around the base path. So he said, thank you, please so, and thank you every day. Someone yelled balk, and I thought it was the umpire, so. You might be correct. Regardless, I mean, it would not have been because otherwise Wolmsmeyer would have scored, so. That's a good point, too. So now runners in second. <laughs> Matishak just was surprised that there was nobody there. 1-1 one, one offering. That one in there for called strike, too. And then when he got a halfway and, and everyone kind of stopped, he even slowed down, and I heard the word balk yelled. So I was like, oh, that's the renegade is just stolen a run. And, it, I mean, I think he just slowed down because <laughs> no one was even contesting they, him. They were just on the edge of the, the, the shortstop and second baseman were just standing on the edge of the grass have no having no interest to get over there to cover the bag. So good heads up play on his part. One two offering. That one called strike three. Right. And that will end the inning. Two left on base. But the Renegades were able to score a run. They had a couple hits in the process and no errors. So they trail by two now at a score of three to one. We'll take a quick break and be back. You're listening to exclusive coverage Renegades baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Moex, Doc and Norm Direct is back better than ever. Much more than your number one ground shuttle transportation service to St. Louis Airport. Yes! Moex Dock and Norm Direct is Mid-Missouri's leader in premier group travel. Sporting events, concerts, wedding receptions, the lake, winery trips, Branson, plaza shopping, reunions, pub crawls, group sizes from 1 to 100 or beyond. We do it all. Remember, we want you to ride Moex Dock and Norm Direct. At Centurion Cares, for more than three decades, their focus has been on exceeding customer expectations for contact center software solutions. Their innovative communication solutions include utility interactive voice response software that allows for smart communication features that let your utility deliver superior customer service 24-7. They also provide other streamlined services like automatic call distribution, automated customer callback, reporting, and quality assurance. To find out more about how Centurion Cares can help your business, call them at 727-421. 5300 or look them up online at centurioncares.com centurion cares innovative communication solutions we go to the top of the sixth inning now as we just did our Military salute here at the ballpark. I want to thank all of our military veterans, our current active military members, and all those that support them for giving us the opportunity to come out and enjoy a little baseball all summer long. We yeah, take our hats off to them. It's such a fun thing that's done here at the ballpark because uh, for most part, both dugouts have gotten into it, both the Renegades, obviously, every game, and for the most part, the road team as well. But the fans, too, and it's something that uh, uh, I believe just added in this year and something that everyone has really been able to get behind every every yeah. fifth inning. I heard St. Joe has taken it, has uh, kind of stole it, too. And to the truth be told, we stole it from somebody else. But you know what? We were the first in the Mink League that started doing that. And that's all that matters. But, yes, you're correct on the St. Joe thing. So, so first pitch here to uh, Jacob Rochester, the designated hitter, is downstairs, ball one. But – you know what, that's something that uh, it would be A-OK -okay if every team in the Meek League would steal and borrow. I think that would be a great thing as there's a ball hit out into center field, actually a little more over to left field as Wagner will put the glove up. Two pitches, one out. Yeah, good work there by Schmidt as he's back out for now, a second straight inning out there. And even though it was hit pretty well, more than enough time for both Wagner and Lovich to run after it. And Wagner, more than enough time to run under it and make the catch. The Renegades have got some good good speed out there in both left field and center field right now in Lovich and Wagner. Not that uh, the Mink League in the offseason meetings that we'll even get to it. I mean, obviously we have representatives go from from our organization, but not that I'll be one of them that go, but I think that's something they su suggest. That first pitch outside ball one. I think what a great thing to uh, make it a Mink League wide deal to say, hey, we're going to do it in the fifth inning. And every game we're going to do it. I think that would be a great thing. So I might have to suggest that that one misses low ball two. So that'll make it 2-0. and oh. Well, I think the two of us know some of the uh, higher-ups in this Renegades organization. So I'm sure we if do. you want that idea shared, I think you can make that happen. Who knows? Maybe they'll invite me to the meeting. I'm not sure. That one fouled back. Technically, to be fair, I think we were all invited. All board members were invited to the last meeting. It was via Zoom, so we could have Zoomed into it. I, was dri I don't know what I was doing that day, but I was driving somewhere, so I didn't have a good chance to get in on the Zoom call. 
two on offering. That one down central for called strike two. You've got some other ideas as well for some potential promotion and stuff at the ballpark. I think one was in, uh, involving a giant target out in center field, so ideas are always Absolutely. cooking for you as we head into the next season. 2-2 two -two offering on its way. That one swung on and missed for out number two. Yeah, the gears are always turning. They might be a little, little creaky, a little uh, janky, and a little rusty, but they're always turning and always trying to think of ways that we can have more fun at the ballpark. Got to say, a lot of our promotions, uh, I wouldn't say I came up with all of the promotions we've we've done at the ballpark, but um, had a lot of help from our board members. But we've had a lot of fun this year, and so far I think things have gone well uh, for us, and we want to continue to to do those things and have fun at the ballpark. So, yeah, we've got some ideas. I mean, the uh, home run hole we'll talk about in just a second. His first offering here is going to be a bouncing ball. It'll be gloved at Perkins at short. He'll take it, throw to first. In time for out number three as that goes as a 6-3 put out to end the inning. So Schmitz was able to retire the side in 1-2-3 fashion and throw very few pitches. Looks like he only threw about six pitches, seven pitches in the inning. So we'll take a quick break and be back as we go to the bottom half of the frame as you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Last Sentinel Firearms is your federally licensed and registered Type 7 FFL manufacturer dealer in Missouri, providing quality products to all types of sports enthusiasts, law enforcement, and individuals across the nation. Orders are currently being fulfilled offering custom-built pistols and rifles from the AR platform made right here in Missouri. Visit their website at lastsentinelfirearms.com or call them at 417-684-7202 to find out what they've got for you. Last Sentinel Firearms, you are your your last line of defense. Running out of some of your favorite Avon products and haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time? No need to worry. Avon Independent Sales Representative Michelle Carty can help with your skin so soft, makeup, jewelry, fragrance, and skin care needs. Avon now carries cleaning supplies, clothing, daily essentials, and several small LG electronic items. You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 and have your order shipped directly to your front door by shopping with Michelle at mcarty.avonrepresentative.com. Dot com or find her on Facebook by searching Avon Carty. We go to the uh, bottom of the sixth inning. Boy, I was just that close to winning the bingo game here as my wife and daughter left their cards and they had one too many as Lovich. We'll see the first pitch to him inside ball one. So one ball and no strike count. Again, 3-1 score right now in favor of the Merchants. That one swung on and missed, so I'll leave the count at one ball and one strike. And one of the fans here. Boy, that's, you know, we've had extremes here on our bingo nights. The very first win at Wednesday we did with baseball bingo, we won after a half inning. Somebody won. And here we are. going to have to do some quick math in my head, but seven, six, 13 innings Yeah, later. this one took 13 innings to have a winner, so. Maybe we need to pick somewhere in between. So evidently we found a car that did not have Grand Slam on it. But there was some discussion whether or not a ball could happen. And despite it, I always had one last inning. There's not. a bouncing ball taken at second. Glove over to first. And time for out number one as that goes as a 4-3 put out. Well, this will be shortstop Taylor Hopkins stepping in. He had a single his last time up. So Hopkins will step in. He had a single, struck out the time before that. There's going to be a well-hit ball. Right fielder tracking it down, going out on it. And he will make the grab just one foot away from foul territory. So long ball there, but that goes as out number two. So now this will be Andrew Ingarden. Not a, not a bad hit ball by Hopkins there. Just had too much air under it, even though he got hit the ball pretty well. Didn't make it to the track, but made a pretty deep bounder in the right field. Just had way too much air on it, and then more than enough time for Berg out there to go and track it down. You want to work your Google foo to see if you can figure out where M. Garden is from as he fouls that one off? I don't, I I don't have anything about him. He's from where? Where? Wait, but where's he from? He's from Moberly. Moberly. Okay, he's from Moberly and goes to Missouri Baptist. How tall is he? 
How tall is he? That one in there for or misses ball two. I believe we went through Moberly on the way back last night. I don't know enough geography to confirm without your guys' help. Yeah, but Moberly's just straight north from here, or more or less north ish. That one also fouled out of place, so. Renegade's running out of chances. They're now down to just three outs and then a couple of strikes here to Emgarden, and otherwise they're staring down the barrel at three straight losses, but. Only it's trailing by two. It just takes a bloop and a blast, but you can't do it when the game's over. Six foot, 180 pounder is him, Garten. There's going to be a ball. He's going to put that into play in center field, so a two out single. So he is making his presence known here as he has got a two for two day and has a walk as well. So what a great way to start off your Renegades career. Well, there's your bloop. Now we just need the harder part, the ball that's hit over the wall to tie this game. But Wagner facing a right-handed pitcher has got the advantage. And don't think we've seen a whole lot of balls hit up that hill out beyond a right field wall. But if Wagner felt good enough to deposit one out there, I think the fans would approve of it. And surely someone would go chasing it down. Well, Wagner will step in now. He took a walk his last at bat and struck out before that, hit into a 1-3 out in his first at bat. He takes a big rip and a miss there for strike one. So he's got a runner on. That's Imgarten on first base. And two outs here to work with. His team trailing by a score of 3-1 to one to the Carroll Merchants right now as we play in the bottom of the sixth inning. Our game slated for seven. Both doubleheaders slated for seven Innings, that one swung on and missed for strike two. Game one went in favor of the Merchants by a score of seven to nothing. That pushed their record to 13 and 12. Renegades dropped their record to nine and 11. So they'd like to get within one game of 500 here if they could split this doubleheader action. Snap throw to first, Imgarten back in time. No tag applied, so he'll step up and dust off the uh, jersey. As they'll have to take those to Capital Laundry just up the street to get them looking good for the next game day. Capital Laundry, the official laundry provider. Launderer, laundry mat, I don't know what you call it. Launderer? One of those things is probably right. That one's going to be swung out of the dirt. Everybody's going to take off as Wagner trying to leg it out. The throw is going to be offline, and he will be safe as he legs it out as the catcher, Bus, draws his first baseman off. And with how Wagner was moving up the first baseline, even that throws on target, at the very least, it is a bang-bang play. So heads up by Wagner after swinging and missing, realized that that ball got away far enough. And so often you see a guy like that so dejected after the strikeout, just give up and head back to the dugout. But Wagner was not going to do that in that situation and now has the tying run on base for the Renegades. Well, this will be Ty Wilmsmeyer. He has had a single the last two times he's been at bat. So he steps on two outs with two on here. Runners on first and second. There's going to be a bouncing ball. It's going to be taken, mishandled by the uh, shortstop, and everybody will be safe. So now it's bases loaded again, Tom. E6. So that goes as an E6. Looks like when that ball was originally hit without hard it was hit, would have had either the play at second or first, but once the shortstop bobbled, took away the play at second, and... Wilmsmeyer, only a couple players on this Renegades roster that beats out that play to first. And Boy, Renegade, it was blistered. That ball, uh, even after the bobble with how hard it was hit, I was not expecting to look over and see Wilmsmeyer at the bag. But, man, Ty Wilmsmeyer, ladies and gentlemen, can fly up the first base bag. Well, Wilmsmeyer listed 6'185 pounders, so that 6'1 is mostly legs, so it doesn't take him long to traverse the base path and get up there, which is exactly what he did. I would he be, got on first base quickly and in a hurry. I would be maybe two-thirds of the way to first in that time, maybe if I'm lucky, if I'm feeling good <laughs> that day. I'm certainly not making it a contest there at the bag, and I'm roughly the same height as Wilmsmeyer, just nowhere near the same in the speed department. Well, I can tell you what I'd do. I'd get out of the box and find some way to fall down. <laughs> I'd still be I'd still be in the home plate area. So if, if it was you and I in that situation, Jack Matashek would not be coming to the Absolutely. plate here with the bases loaded. This inning would be over. So Jack Matashek steps in now, bases loaded. He's got a two for two day with a hit by pitch, has a stolen base as well. So two outs here, bases are loaded. First pitch to him inside ball one. Any ball that touches outfield grass is most likely nodding this ball game as we saw the speed with Wagner out at second base. 
already kept this inning alive by beating out a drop third strike, which if he doesn't beat that out, this inning's not even continuing right now. So. One ball, no strike count again. 3-1 lead in favor of the Merchants. That pitch, that one misses the outside, or catches the outside part of the plate, I should say. That evens a count of one ball and one strike. Matashek delivers here, either tie the game or give the lead. I think we uh, make a some sort of, of ruling that he can't remove the white cleats ever again. I agree with that. Wheel looks in, 1-1 one, one offering. There's a big swing and a miss for strike two. He talked about when he came on the postgame show on, I believe it was Sunday, how about sometimes that, that right field fence out there is looking pretty mighty, and he was taking a swing that said that. He wanted to drive in four right there, and there's no doubt about it with that swing. So one ball, two strike count again. Two outs, bases loaded. Matashek digs back in on the left-hand side of the plate. Wheels delivery. That one's going to be hit into left field. Is it going to get down? It will not as it is caught by the left fielder. And that will be out number three as it took a ride but just couldn't evade the left fielder as Matashek just comes up short as he almost put it in a place that would have tied the ball game up. So we'll take a quick break and be back as you're listening to exclusive coverage of Renegades Baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. Serving the capital city and the surrounding area for 70 years, Animal Medical Center strives to provide the best possible medical service for your pet in a caring atmosphere. To promote quality healing and preventative care in a fear-free environment, Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City is a full-service veterinary hospital. Whether your pet has fur, feathers, or scales, Dr. Greg Boyer and Dr. Kayla Terry have the experience and expertise to treat complex medical conditions as well as providing annual well checks and vaccinations. Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City is the only veterinary hospital in the capital city accredited by the American Animal Hospital Association. To schedule an appointment, call the team at Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City at 573-636-4626. At the Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. We know that you're more than just a subscriber. You're an employer. You're a parent. You're a neighbor. Most importantly, you're a community member. It's our goal to provide you with the latest news, sports, opinions, obituaries, classifieds, and more to keep you informed about your community. To find out more about the Boone County Journal or to subscribe, call 573-657-2334 or visit bocojo.com. The Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. We will go into the seventh inning of work. Sorry, I got uh, sidetracked. There, what is our dance team called? No. Well, considering the dance team is made up, I think of more men than yeah. women. I don't know. The Renegades. The Renegades, the Renegals, and the Rene Dancers. So that first pitch misses as this will be batters two, three, and four. four. This is Seth Christensen. Schmitz is back out there once again, proving his ability to go across multi-innings and pitch good baseball. That one's going to be fouled out, so we'll leave it at one ball, one strike. Crucial that the Renegades keep this just a two-run deficit for a team that's only scored one run through their first six innings, although they showed some signs of life in the past two trips to the plate. But now they're going to have to try and score at least two, and the top of the order just hit, so it's going to be up to the middle of it. Smitch next delivery. That one misses. Ball two. Uh, two balls and one strike count. And next pitch on its way. There's going to be a bouncing ball. Hopkins will glove at short. He'll throw to first in time for out number one. Him and Gorley just playing a little 6-3 catch out there. Going back to that flyout off the bat of Matashek that ended last inning, not only would it have tied the game because easily would have scored Wagner from second base, but when that ball was caught out there, Ty Wunsmeyer was already a little over halfway to third base, and maybe if you get a generous bounce and it lands, I mean, we're looking at potentially with the speed, maybe the Renegades even take the lead. I'm not sure if they send him there, but Ty was certainly flying, and for how that ball was hit, he made his way from first halfway to third by the time that ball was caught. There's going to be a bouncing ball that'll be taken at second. Glove over to first. One pitch, one out. As that goes, is a 4-3 put out. Now it's going to be first baseman Garrick Freeman. He is 
0 for 2 with a walk. All right, Tanner, let's go Despite being an out away from pitching what I believe would be two and a third innings, it feels like Schmitz is barely putting wear and tear on the arm because he's getting quick outs pretty much everyone he faces. You're absolutely right on that. So two outs here, first offering, two Freeman, that one outside, ball one. I gotta say too, we're getting much better at our hey baby dance. As we as we do it more and more, we're getting much better. That one upstairs and inside. It was mentioned maybe we, we spend some time maybe practicing that. But we're getting a little smoother at it. So two balls, no strikes, again two outs. Looks like we're having a review whether or not that pitch was swung at. They ruled that the batter Freeman did not go around. You know what would solve the problem is they just need to throw the first base coach out, and then it would solve the problem because he's argued with everything. Tonight. I don't know why in the world you would argue here because the call went your team's way. That's the, I don't, I don't really understand that, but to each their own. They just throw them out here. It'd save a lot of problem and headache and hassle. There's going to be a bouncing ball. It's going to be gloved at third. Wilmsmeyer throw to first in time. For out number three, as three up and three down, Wilmsmeyer goes to Gorling at first for a 5-3 put out. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh. Renegades have to push at least two runs through. If not three, we go home. So we'll take a quick break and be back. You'll listen to exclusive coverage of Renegades baseball here on the Show Me Sports Network. When things come out of left field, having a game plan matters. Farmers Insurance has over 90 years of experience helping people play through every stage of the game. We've seen almost everything, so we know how to cover almost anything. Talk to Farmers Agent Christopher Scott at 573-896-0131 to see how I can help you stay in the game. That's Christopher Scott at 573-896-0131. We are farmers. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. Underwritten by Farmers, Truck Fire Insurance, Exchanges, and Affiliates. Products not available in every state. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society. Jefferson City Chapter 10. Doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take a walk, Eddie! So we go to the bottom of the seventh inning now. As Perkins getting ready to lead things off, look like we're having. Looks like the uh, looks like the merchants are going to try and go with just two pitchers to cover the seven innings here. So this will be batters four, five, and six. This will be Perkins, Rocker, Bomber, and Gorling will be the ones due up. The first pitch, inside ball one. For some reason tonight our. System is having a hard time making it through the whole game, staying connected. I blame it on the heat from Yeah, I was going to say, because we have not had that problem yet this season. That one in the dirt, ball two. We haven't started a game at 5 o'clock either, so I could say I think that's where some of the issue is coming from, maybe. Well, well, we'll have to see you tomorrow at 7 p.m. in Clorinda. Clorinda, nice stadium. What's it that is ballpark? It's historic. Nice. Okay. 2-0 pitch. That one in there for called strike one. Uh, so to sum it up, out in left and right field is Corn. There's a John Deere implement dealership behind first base. Wouldn't expect anything less out of Iowa. That one fouled off even 2-2 two two now. Behind, uh, behind you, so obviously you sit behind home plate. Behind you is, uh, is the fairgrounds and a stockyard and then... I don't remember what's kind of over behind the uh, third base side. I think it's more of the stockyard fairgrounds area. Okay. 2-2 two -two offering on its way. There's going to be a slow roller. Third baseman's going to knock it into his face, and it'll get into uh, left field. So it'll be a leadoff single for Perkins. Just with the doctor ordering. Perkins living right. That's his third hit of the day in the two games combined that the ball did not leave the infield. And, that ball, if not for the diving stop, would have made its way into left, but Christensen knocked it down, but then had no play at first base. But 
Doesn't matter how you get him on. All that matters is that the Renegades have the tying run coming to the plate. So now this will be T.J. Ronkerbomber, the catcher. He had a sack fly his last time up. Struck out a couple times as well. So runner on first base, nobody out here as he steps in. In, Renegades trail by a score, three to one. First pitch to him, outside ball one. Talk about the uh, double header rule. How much different would this game feel if it's just a three run game in the bottom of the seventh, ex except right here now, it's the feeling like you're on the bottom of the ninth. Absolutely right about that. So one ball, no strike count. Wheel looks over at the runner at first base. That's Perkins. Now he's set 1-0 offering. That one missed. Ball two. Not a big lead down there for Perkins. No reason for him to be because his run really does not matter as much as the guy currently standing at the plate. So you would hate to give up an out just like we saw happen on Sunday in our game against St. Joe when they had two runners on and one got picked off. Perkins cannot afford to make a base on a gaff here. So no reason to over lead off. So two balls, no strike count. Wheels next pitch, that one outside, that makes it 3-0. I will say at the ballpark in Clarinda, it is historic. It's been there a long time. Ozzie Smith played there many, many moons ago. But they do have a great organization. They're super accommodating, super friendly. Really enjoy the time when we get to go up there. But you'll get to experience that tomorrow and Friday as well. So three balls, no strike count. Wheel looks in. Now he's set. 3-0 offering. That one is upstairs, a four-pitch walk issue to Rocker Bomber. Just the start to the top, or excuse me, bottom of the seventh inning that the Renegades needed. Now this will be first baseman Carter Gorling walking in. He's 0 for 3, strikeout, strikeout, 5-3 put out. And Coach D'Amelio just came out of the dugout to have a conversation with Gorling, and although now there's going to be a meeting at the mound. But regardless, he's coming out to talk to uh, Gorling, maybe talking about a potential bunt situation. You would hate to see what happened earlier in the afternoon when the Renegades had a similar situation and then grounded into a double play. Don't know if they'll put the bunt on here for Gorling, but regardless. So do you have a pitcher warming up in the... Bullpen for the Merchants, that is Noah Dutler. If he played uh He DH'd played game earlier, one, yeah. yeah. Played a, I believe he scored or maybe a run or two, even drove in a run. So that'd be quite the day at the ballpark if you play a rolling offense in the first game, then close out the second. I'm a little surprised here that at the tying run that they maybe aren't opting to pinch run for Rocket Bomber. Obviously, you'd think maybe one of your outfielders, infielders upgraded speed over your catcher, but... With the double double header, don't know how many players are available, so they stick with Rocker Bomber at first base. So Carter Gorling will step in now. You think I think maybe what uh, him and Mike were discussing about where he was going to put it over the fence at. That would be better than what I was going to say, and do you think I would see a bunt? But I would much rather prefer a ball even the yard. But Gorling will step in now. He's going to take a big rip and a miss there. Well, he was trying to put one over the fence. That ball, if he connects on time, I think that is out to left field, but was late enough to foul tip it into the glove. Here the fans start to clap here. Two runners on, nobody out. The uh, Renegades trail by two. Gorling represents the winning run. He's at home plate. Oh, one offering, he fouls that one off. He's gonna try to leg it out. They will throw down to first base to get out number one, but the runners move a little bit closer. Tell you what, that's as good of a bunt. I'm sure they would love to not have to give up an out to get it, but you advance the runners and now a single maybe ties this game. And it's the, someone who leads the Renegades in home runs this season coming up to the plate. So really maybe not the best result after all. That's a bunt that went all of about maybe a foot in front of home plate. And tell you what, what great way to break out of kind of a slide here for Lovich than to hit home run number four on the season. So center fielder Ross Lovich is stepping in now. He was hit by pitch in his first at bat, flew out to right field, and then also hit into a 4-3 put out the first out of the last inning. First pitch to him. He'll take that one and strike one. First baseman plays a little bit off the bag and also plays deep. So if Lovich were to hit a ground ball down the line, it's more than certain enough to get into the outfield the way they have the first baseman positioned. Also a big gap between first and second. Catcher Bus goes through his signs. Now Wheel will stare at third base, check at second, look back home, 0 one offering. That one's a big swing and a miss. Or strike number two. Like you said, a big swing there. Wasn't able to come up, but still alive in the at-bat, but he'd like to see as with one out and two runners on. Need the Renegades hitter to put the runner and put you put to the ball in play. 
Again, looking back in his wheel. No balls, two strikes to count. Again, one out here, two runners on. They're in scoring position. Next pitch, that one in the dirt. They'll say Lovich did not go around. And that will get the coach out there to have a conversation. He, he needs to throw him out. Yep, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So the coach is thrown out of the game finally. It took him sprinting from the dugout. Clear to talk to the back judge before he is thrown out because he wanted the call to go around. So he's still having words out there for the umpire. That is something unforeseen. You know, one ball, two strike count. The other team's manager came out in a full sprint. Well, we should expect it because he was arguing a 2-0 count with his own batter. I, I mean, and I don't know what the rules are here, but he certainly made contact with the umpire too. And in the big leagues, that's an automatic suspension. And I don't know what the rules are here, but uh, that was certainly over the line. I think there's a uh, suspension as well if you make contact. Well, I, it certainly looked like he at least bumped the field umpire, and that's just a gigantic no-no. We want to let the the, um, the managers and umpires argue a little bit, but that was just a full sprint directly at the umpire for... I mean, it wasn't even like that was a clear swing there by Lovich. It was close enough to be called either way, not definitive one way or the other. And, man, that's just that's just not good for the game, I'll tell you that. So now I, I don't remember, and I don't know the rule book enough. Does he have to uh, exit the ballpark then? I do not know. Umpire's looking I'm out there. I'm thinking so because I see Mike D'Amelia, the head coach for the Renegades, is out here. And I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can't make out everything the home plate umpire is saying, which may be good or bad, but he's saying, I don't already told you. Well, You can go down there and listen. I can tell you that the head coach has left the stadium. He is standing out there. Well, how did he get out there past? Oh, Probably he walked, walked behind, us. behind us. Yeah. Maybe he just kept his sprint going. He has made his way to the parking lot. I can confirm that. They just threw someone else out as well. well who, who's that one that got thrown out? This is a wild turn of events in a game that not only it's the craziest part about this is that the merchants are leading this. Well, ball now game. there's two or three people that are coming out. So did he toss more than one person? This is crazy from a team that is winning the ball game. That's the they're they are winning. Ashley, we need you to go down and find out what's happening for us. <laughs> we need we need boots on the ground over here in the dugout. So we'll, we'll try to see who, who all's left to finish this game here. Smart decision by Wheel continuing to throw warm-up pitches and stay loose. So we think there's been three people thrown out of the game. You can still see the, one of the coaches that got ejected walking around behind us in the uh, parking lot. Now the two players that are gonna follow him on out there. So to get you reset here is one ball, two strike count. One out here, runners on second and third. Renegades trail by a score of three to one. This is Lovich at bat. That pitch down there called strike three. That is out. Number two, I really expected somebody to come running out of the dugout there to argue with that on the uh, merchant side, but nobody came out. So now this will be shortstop Taylor Hopkins as he steps in. Two outs here, bottom of the seventh inning. It's do or die time now, as T Hops has a chance to tie it up and or possibly send us to extra or win it in walk-off fashion. First pitch to him, there's a ball lifted in the air. It's gonna stay in the infield and diving grab, nobody catches it. So one run will score. Did they say infield fly rule? As Wisely go into second as Hopkins, he's going to dive in there. Rocker Bomber standing on third base. Let's see if he breaks for home in a minute. One run scored as Hopkins is going to end up on second base. No infield fly rule was called that I heard. I'll tell you what, this is about as wild of an inning as you can get. And that ball looks like off the bat it was going to be out number three. And Ashley Cartier needs to get her mouth washed out with soap. 
Now a ball hit into the outfield could win the game because Hopkins moved up to second base. So Hopkins is going to get credit for a double on that. Well, now in this situation, I think this is who I'd want up is Mr. New Renegade here and second baseman Andrew M. Garten. Run scored on that play, by the way. It did. So it's now one run ball game at three to two as M. Garten steps in as a two for two day with a walk. First pitch to him, and they're calling strike one. So the run scored as Hopkins ends up at second base. When it's all said and done, Rocker Bomber ends up at third. Perkins reaches home and scores. Hopkins speed a, a single here would be perfect. That one they say he went around for strike two. So now it'll be no balls and two strikes again. Runners on second and third. We're a one-run game at three runs to two runs. The Merchants over the Renegades. M. Garten is at bat right now. He's down to the count at 0-2 as Wheel looks in. Now he gets this sign. 0-2 offering. That one outside. Looked like that slipped out of the back of his hand. So that'll make it one ball and two strikes. M. Garten again digs back in. Not a bad pitch there on the 0-2 either. M. Garten just wasn't able to chase. Hopefully now it leads to getting a pitch he can handle. The 1-2 offering will be forthcoming as Wheel will tow the rubber. He'll look at home. 1-2 offering. That one missed just outside. Evens account two balls and two strikes. That's a stone cold take and not one that I don't, I don't think I'd leave the bat on my shoulder another time in this at bat, I'll, I'll tell you that much. Again, three runs to two runs. The Merchants over the Renegades right now. Two balls, two strike count, two out here, bottom of the seventh inning. As M. Garten windmills the bat, now he gets set. Wheel will look over at third. Now look at home, 2-2 offering. Again, that one looks like it just slips out of the back of his hand and will go full now. At three balls and two strikes in the on-deck circle is Cole Wagner. He would be due up if M. Garten can find a way to get on base. They are not even holding the runners at second and third base on. Playing way back, certainly trying to prevent any ball from touching outfield grass. Because if it does, Renegades could win this one 4-3. Rocker Bomber on third, Hopkins on second. Payoff pitch on its way. There's a ball that's going to be fouled off, so we'll do it again. And Brady Malp, he came up with that foul ball like he was going to throw it at one of the players for the Merchants. So a little fun being had in one of the most tense moments of the ball game. Three players or two players and a coach have already been thrown out of the game here for the Merchants here in this bottom half of this seventh inning. We will look back in. M. Garten points the bat out, adjusts the batting helmet. Take a couple of practice cuts. Now he's ready. Wheel. Look at third now home, payoff pitch. There's a bouncing ball. It's going to be gloved at, at second, throw to first, in time for out number three. As that will end the ball game, as that goes as a 4-3 put out to end the game. But we had some fireworks, both literal and figuratively, as we had some fireworks earlier in the game and we're shooting off over to our left. And then we had some fireworks here in the bottom half of the seventh inning as a coach and two players ejected from the ball game here. And Renegades had a chance. They pushed one run across, but came up one short as they dropped the second game of this doubleheader by a final of three to two. Yeah, and despite the loss, it's it's got to be tough, especially when you drop both games of a doubleheader. But this Renegades team could have easily glide down trailing three to one after four, or excuse me, three to nothing after four and a half. But each inning in the fifth, sixth, and seventh showed a ton of fights. I believe got runners into scoring position in every inning and loaded the base even a couple times and and multiple points throughout this bottom of the seventh and, and even the last couple innings, this game could have been put away. And even though they had a little help go their way, I, I think this is, yeah, yeah, you may not believe in moral victories, but they showed a lot of fight here tonight and they're going to they're gonna win some games like this. I can tell you that. They'll have a couple in July just like this where the title turn and despite losing in heartbreaking fashion last night and tonight, they there will be a couple that go the other way and Already seen it a couple times with Hopkins, the walk-off a couple days ago. Willsmeyer had one on an error early in the season, and they're coming, and even though it's it's tough right now, they're, they're coming for the Renegades. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right on that. And, you know, when we look at these two games, 
and this is something that uh, head coach Mike D'Amelia talks about uh, for the Renegades, is that, you know, they're going to win some games, but that also means they're going to lose some games. And so as we talked about it, too, and played a doubleheader, you, you really just have to have a short memory. You have to be able to go in and say, okay, we did good, we did bad, we did indifferent, but we got to clear that out. And the same would be true if they won the game. If they would have won game one, you still have to have that same idea is that you just get in and you say, okay, game one's over, let's clear it out. Now we got to get set for game two. So game one going in seven to nothing in favor of the Merchants. Game two obviously was a whole lot closer in a 3-2 to two final, but game two was a much better played game for the Renegades in game one. Absolutely, and it shows, it shows the, the ability to kind of wipe the slate clean. And also throughout the entire course of the season for every team at any league, you're going to win some games you shouldn't, and you're going to lose some games that you should have won. Renegades probably deserved to win the game last night, blow it in the ninth and end up losing. I guarantee you, and I, I'll put money, a lot of money down on this, that there's going to be time later on in the season where the Renegades look dead in the water playing sloppy baseball, and then we leave the ballpark saying, how did they pull that one off? It's going to happen. It just didn't go their way tonight. Had the Renegades come back and won this one, it would have been on the back of some clutch hitting and even a couple errors as well, and maybe we would have said, hey, Renegades got lucky. So stuff like that is going to happen, and just the key is just to stay the course. Like you said, wipe the slate clean because now you've got a big opportunity headed to Clorinda to take on a good A's team tomorrow and if, if you let this one linger a little bit too long I guarantee you the results these next two games of Clorinda are not going to be the ones that you're looking for. Well and you know you're absolutely right on that and, and it's just you know you have to have that short memory regardless of which side of the uh, of, of the, the win or lose column you're on you have to have a short memory and you got to get out here and you got to play the game but you know you, you look at that and you say you talked about that on, on you you win some games you shouldn't have and you lose some games that you should have won but look at how many of those lucky breaks like the stars aligned where I'm, I don't think I've seen a game that had so many slow rolling balls that just were nowhere near getting to the outfield but were able to put a, to put a runner on a base path that's something I've not seen in, in quite a while that many in one game. But for the Merchants, that, that was working for them. But both teams, another thing too, both teams leaving a lot of runners on the base path here tonight. Absolutely, and especially for the Renegades doing it early on. And eventually that comes, ends up bite them in the butt because they lose this game by one run, a final of 3-2. to two. And you can say, well, the Merchants did the same with some of their at-bats early, especially when you look at this afternoon against Carriker where they had base runners all over the base pass early. But it, it's going to be a kind of a thing there where I think you mentioned it too in these seven inning games. It just feels like whoever's going to make the first mistake is going to end up losing the game. Even though the Renegades fought back, they did make the first mistake, made the first couple falling behind three to nothing on the back of, like you said, the couple infield hits. I believe the, the one of the two runs that scored in the second was because just back-to-back -back infield hits, one to the second baseman and one to the shortstop. So just little things like that. Just gate, they didn't go their way at the – Day did not go the Renegades' way here at the ballpark, not only losing one, but losing both. And I'm sure it's something that they're going to have to go home and think about. But new day tomorrow, and it's especially when you look at the July schedule, Renegades are going to play a lot of games in a short amount of days. And I believe it's a lot of doubleheaders, too. I know we got one next Wednesday at home against Nevada. And then I think even the Wednesday after that, they play a doubleheader in Nevada. So opportunities like that when you're going to play two in a day, 14 innings of baseball, where I can tell you what, it's a pretty good feeling if you walk out of there having taken both of them. It's a bad feeling here tonight, but they're going to have one of those games here at some point in the next month and a week or so where, where they take them both. Well, and officially, 13 base runners left on the base path for the Renegades, and there were eight left on the base path for the Merchants. So they didn't quite leave as many left on the base path, but that's still, uh, still a tough pill to swallow, something that obviously both teams need to work on that, particularly – I know for the Renegades, several of those base runners were left in scoring position, which is kind of a, a tough pill to swallow. And three for the Merchants that left the entire stadium early. Absolutely. So that's going to do it for our postgame show here uh, for today. Any final thoughts before you get out of here, Ben? No, I would just have to say that uh, it's going to be continued ups, downs and lows for this Renegades team. Looked like they were really turning a corner, won three in a row, and seemed on their way to four last night before the last basically 24 hours now going back to the loss last night and the two losses here today, right back to three games under 500. And now all I'm left to believe is that it's going to start getting going again, and hopefully it starts tomorrow against the A's. Now we got an exhibition game coming up Saturday against the Legends, and then back to work next week, and now i got a couple off days, but... Uh, 
the, the opportunity is there for the taking, especially in when you just look at records-wise, the weaker of the two divisions. That's just a fact. That's not being mean to the Renegades, the Outlaws, or the Bombers. But when you look at the records, it's the, the lighter of the two divisions, and the opportunity is going to most likely be there for the entire rest of the season. It's just now up to the Renegades to put some consistency together and take it. Well, I think, uh, as I said, too, you mentioned it a couple times, but uh, the positive thing is the Renegades now have – Broke that goose egg. What, they have 14, 15 well, innings? Well, the, the final five innings last night, the first seven innings today, so that's 12. And then uh, we looked at the first five, so 17 innings without a run. Yeah, it's that's what they were going on. But able to score two runs, one in the seventh, or one in the fifth, one in the seventh. I looked there when the, the third to last inning and saw a run and automatically thought seventh and then had to remember that this game only went seven innings. They scored one in the fifth, one in the seventh, and, and had an opportunity to score more, just can't do it. But... As we saw during those winning streaks, when they got runners on, it was it was doubles, triples, clearing the bases. They haven't been able to do that these last last couple of games, but as things start to turn around, they'll have balls that'll ones like the Wolmsmeyer one that went to the track. There'll be a game where a ball is hit just like that and it finds outfield grass, bounces off the wall, stuff like that, where it's just not going the way now. And started to show life of turning here in the seventh inning, and hopefully for their sake continues tomorrow in Clorinda, in uh, basically the middle of a cornfield, as you uh, t tell me. Yeah, pretty much. But like I said, it's a historic ballpark. It's a good place to go. They're good people there in Clarinda. So that's going to do it for our broadcast here today as uh, Ben will make the uh, trek to Clarinda to have the next two games. That will be on the road at Clarinda, one game tomorrow, and then there's another game on Friday. And then we'll be right back here for a non-league game on Saturday night as the uh, Jeff City Legends come to town. And that's always a fun night at the ballpark. That's also when we have a, uh, a new thing we're going to be debuting for the broadcast. I've dropped a, a couple or uh, one hint so far. We'll have another hint tomorrow and probably another one on Friday to uh, – let everybody maybe figure out what we're going to be doing and what we're going to be adding. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So you're going to want to definitely tune into the game, uh, obviously tomorrow and Friday, but for sure on Saturday as well. But uh, like I said, Ben will have the uh, trip down to Iowa as I cannot make it for the time being for this go round of that. So that's going to do it for our broadcast here uh, for tonight's game as the Renegades drop both halves of the doubleheader. They fall in uh, game one to the uh, Carroll Merchants by a score of 7 to nothing, and they drop game two by a score of 3-2. to two. Until uh, we talk to you here in a few days, until I talk to you here in a few days, as Ben's got the call tomorrow and Friday, and we talk to you on Saturday. Uh, for Ben Schmidt, I'm Blake Gasaway for the Show Me Sports Network. So long and have a great evening. You've been listening to the biggest and absolute best game coverage in mid-Missouri on the exclusive home for Jefferson City Renegades Baseball, the Show Me Sports Network, and the Renegades Radio Network. The Show Me Sports Network broadcast crew are the ones that know your Renegades the best. Exclusive coverage of Jefferson City Renegades Baseball has been brought to you by Animal Medical Center of Jefferson City. Avon with Michelle Carty. Boone County Journal, Centurion Cares, Christopher Scott, Farmers Insurance, Doc and Norm Direct, Eddie Goodell Society, Han Custom Laser Engraving, LLC, Hoslog Landscaping and Design, Last Sentinel Firearms, Retrieving Freedom, River Oak Christian Academy, Sawdust Studios, State Tech of Missouri, and Walk Off Wood Bat Company. We hope you've enjoyed the broadcast. Join us anytime on the web at showmesportsnetwork.com or find us on Facebook by searching the Show Me Sports Network. The Show Me Sports Network and the Renegades Radio Network, your exclusive home for 